Hello and welcome into my latest live vlog. Today is October the 15th, right there in the, the middle of October. Somehow we made it halfway through October. And joining me, my sister, Linda. And today we're going to do, say hello, Linda. Hi. And we're going to um, do something a little different today. Uh, my little sister is a very accomplished chef in the sense that um, She's very good at creating unique creations that are amazingly delicious. And we're going to do two things. We're going to show how to bake something. And while it's baking, we're going to build a computer. Yep. What are we making today and why? We are making a gluten-free and keto um, pumpkin harvest cake. I live a ketogenic lifestyle. I am sugar free, although I do bake lots of yummy sugar. Keep telling me about sugary being treats. sugar free as I enjoy my Coke. Yeah, I enjoy that. Um, mm. I do enjoy making a lot of sugary treats. I live a ketogenic lifestyle, which means I don't eat sugar and I only eat um, whole grains and, and uh, soluble fiber. So we are going to make a delicious pumpkin harvest cake. And we all know how picky of an eater Carrie is, so we're going to make him eat it too. I thought it was a bread. Now it's a cake. I'm sorry. It's a bread. Yeah, I got. What's the difference between a bread and a cake? Well, I think a bread is more dense than a cake. You wouldn't want a cake to be as dense and tough. I think as I'm a more dense than breast. a cake. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure everybody can see and hear me. Okay. Hello to uh, Michael C., Dave Murray, Velaschov, Ivanov, Alej Topej. Douglas Biggers, platter jockey, Sharon Idol. Hey, Douglas, I went to dinner last night using the money you sent. You said, Douglas said, uh, here's some money for you and your wife to go and enjoy a nice dinner. It sounds like you need it. I did. Where'd you go? We went to Guido's. Oh. And I got my favorite, my broasted fish. And Michelle got the broasted chicken. And I took a little piece of chicken. And she took a little piece of fish with roasted potatoes. And it was delicious. Yum. And, uh, Cheers, Douglas. Thank you for that. And your case badges are on the way. Anybody who's ordered case badges, those all went out today. Everybody should be caught up. If you ordered a case badge more than two weeks ago and you have not received it, please let me know. Um, there was a bit of a delay uh, in getting those out, and I apologize. It was just me trying to balance my time, and I'm really, really bad at it. Uh, we are going to, oh, let's see. Nick Poverman says hello. Platter Jackie says hello. Magni Johansson. Johansson says hello. Adam Wood says hello. Tom Schulten says hello from Holland. I recognize and, uh, a lot of these names. From Rob Gurley, Holden. Superman G, Stan Wallander. Where else would you see a computer and baking build? You know, people say, you ever cook in your kitchen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're going to cook and build a PC today. So here's what I'm going to do. Keto computers. I'm keto. So ketosis is just eating fat. It's not just eating fat. It's having the proper combination. Uh, your body Damn either it. runs off. It sounded perfect. Your body either runs off glucose or ketones. And your body prefers to burn glucose because it's faster. But if you burn ketones instead, your body has to work a little harder and it burns fat for energy instead of sugar. And so when you're not feeding your body fat, it will start burning off your stored body fat for energy. So you can burn fat while you sleep. Which is nice, but Man, there's I also sleep for besides weeks. weight loss because it's not it's not a magic bullet for weight loss. So besides weight loss, there's also a number of health benefits that they're researching currently. And and I and I think it, there's a common disclaimer that you should see your doctor's advice before you start any special diet to make sure. Of course, yes. And so, um, but for people that are interested in um, keto based recipes, they're kind of hard to come by tasty good ones, right? I mean, there's yes. lots of disgusting kale. Right. Yeah. There, but there's, um, the internet has a lot up for offer now. And um, the recipe that I'm using, I got from nomnom.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I absolutely adore We'll put a link to the recipe blogger. and make sure they get the proper credit for that. Absolutely. Terry McGill has it. contributed $10 Australian dollars. He says, hi, Carrie and Linda have a Coke on me. Well, Linda will have a diet. I'll Dr. have a diet coke, sugar free. And uh, <clears throat> I went. Uh, you know, I've got a sis. We're going to build this. This is uh, new Coca Cola build number two of four. We're going to build that uh, when we get this recipe done and baking. Then we'll go to the build. Well, that's cooking. 
and I tried, I went to FedEx to get a price on it. Remember I said I don't like to ship outside of the United States and everybody's like, would you do it for me? Okay, so I said I would do it for one person and see how it goes. I got a price quote to ship from Phoenix to Australia. When I shipped the same computer to Oregon, it cost me $100. Does anybody want to guess? Does anybody in the chat room want to guess what FedEx wants to estimate the shipping of the same computer to Australia instead of Oregon? Remember, $100 to Oregon. I'd like to see some estimates on what you think FedEx quoted me for shipping to Australia. Now, I'm not going to say that uh, FedEx is the standard price, but I will tell you, um, whatever your guess is, double it. <laughs> even those guesses, they can double every, it. It's every guess so enough. far is low. Even if you double it, it's not enough. And this does not include, this does not include import fees or taxes or tariffs. This is just the shipping. And it's 15 day shipping, 15 days. $800, I wish. 750, no. 1200, Don Beverly's about right, $1200. Congratulations, Don, you've won nothing. <laughs> but yes, it's about $1200 to ship a $3,200 computer. And then when it arrives, uh, then there's a tax that'll be placed on it. And then every item that goes in the box, like I can say computer, right? I don't have to specify all the parts in the computer, but the keyboard, the mouse, the bobblehead, the external USB, DVD, all have to be listed separately on the customs form. So I think DHL could probably get it done for under 500. I need to contact DHL. I think DHL will even come to my house and pick it up. But see, this is one of the problems with shipping outside of the US. They've got to do research and fill out forms and I have no idea if it's even going to arrive in one piece. They want to know if it includes insurance. Uh, yes, that includes insurance. And in fact, mm -hmm. what I've learned is when you will let FedEx, when you pay them to box it, then they're more likely to cover insurance damage because yeah. they can't claim it wasn't packed properly. That's true. So that's interesting. It's maybe worth spending the 20 bucks and let FedEx pack it. FedEx even said, look, I know this is expensive to ship, ship to Australia, but if you want, we'll still pack it for you. We have all the things you need for us to pack it. And then you can take it to DHL. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So, you know, they were straight up about that. And I think DHL may be just better for, uh, you know. More freight type. Uh, for international stuff versus yeah. domestic. Uh, USPS and UPS are so expensive. So that's a puzzle I have to solve at some point today. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be Mr. Cameraman here. I'm going to hook up a camera. I'm going to walk over to where you are. I understand you have a lot of things pre-measured, just like on the like what the professionals do. Yeah, I kind of I didn't want to bore everybody with you know silly details, so just going to get to the point, show you what you need to know, and we are going to make this bread. I did get I do have a special fancy pan. A and fancy pan? Yeah, the pan has. Let me see if I can. The pan has a design on it, so when the bread comes out, it's going to have this amazing like pumpkin detail on the top of it. So it's kind of hold that on an angle so I can see the depth of the angle, angle it. There you go. Decorating without any of the work. I'm going to let the oven decorate <clears throat> for me on this one. Patrick Russo says DHL sucks. Well, if anybody has any uh, suggestion, I don't know what I'm doing. If anybody has any suggestions for an international shipper that's affordable, that can carry a package that's about 24 inch squared, weighs about 50 pounds. Uh, my eyes and ears are open because I have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm sure somebody in the chat room is like, yeah, what else is new? <laughs> All right, let me, uh, let me get this camera fired up. Let's open this. Okay, let's put autofocus on. Autofocus. Okay, we're on auto. And uh, I am going to... See, I like to show a little behind the scenes on how it's done. Mm -hmm. We're not here to try and impress people with our... Uh... Also, we don't have the staff, so everything is behind the scenes. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we could do this off, off live and then edit it and make That's it true. look like anybody else. But why would we be like everybody else? Mm -hmm. All right, let me switch over to camera two. Where's camera two? Ooh, all right, camera two. Ooh, it's all Blair Witchy. Blair Witchy? <laughs> wow, you're old. That's a dated reference. Oh, uh, well. Okay. 
It's a dated mouth and brain. I shipped an item to Taiwan and it arrives say Austin Davids. Hi Austin. Crusty pumpkins. UPS or DHL? It's both, Rich. Who says cooking and computers have to be one or the other? Mutually exclusive, I think is the word. Yeah. That okay, works. let's come on over here. Me... And we are going to put a link to this recipe. Just um, look at me. When everything is said and done. So I'm going to get started first by putting all of my flowers together. So um, also, we preheated the oven to 350. That's the first thing you want to do. And now I'm going to combine my flowers, which this is 128 grams of almond flour. So we don't measure by cups and teaspoons anymore? You can. Aren't you supposed to measure by weight? I prefer to measure by weight because cooking is, you know, chemistry and things need to be precise. Oh, is there going to be an explosion or a volcano later? Potentially. So this is 30 grams of coconut flour going in. 30 grams. You make it sound like drugs. Yeah. <laughs> And then in my little baggies here, oh, unlike drugs, drugs, I have 28 grams of golden flax meal that I've already- Did you have to go to a dark alley to buy that? <laughs> no, but I did have to grind it a little bit. I always grind up oh, yeah. Yeah. my you flax gotta have before your I use it. And then I have 20 grams of psyllium husk powder. I didn't know, what, what is a psyllium husk? Psyllium husk is just basically fiber. Um, it is actually oh, the main the ingredient in, of Metamucil. Oh, uh, beta fiber. Yep. Right? Yep. It's just uh, it fiber poop. that will not spike your blood glucose. But it makes you poop. And then I need one tablespoon. You're just ignoring my comment about poop. Absolutely. <laughs> I need one tablespoon of uh, pumpkin pie spice. And I have, oh, there's my tablespoon. How come if pumpkin's so great we only have it during October? Probably because that's when it's in season. Oh, come on. It's a worldwide economy. It's in season somewhere all the time. <laughs> it's pumpkin time somewhere. Oops. That's what I'm saying. I go a little liberally on the pumpkin pie spice. Yeah. Not tired of it yet. And then a tablespoon of baking powder. I use aluminum free baking powder. Because, I get mine with extra aluminum. Because I'm cooking with psyllium husk. And uh, well, because of the psyllium husk, if you use baking powder with aluminum in it, it'll turn it purple. It won't hurt you. It'll still taste the same. It's just, it's purple. I wore aluminum on my head and it started to turn purple, but I might've had it on too tight. Definitely. Half a teaspoon of salt. So this is just kosher salt. Is that a scientific measurement? No, I like to just pour it in my hand mm -hmm. and then I just pour it in my, I don't, I'm going to have to use two quarter teaspoons. And they said I wouldn't use fractions. Well, you only use them half of the time. So that was almost a perfect did measurement. There? Did you see that? Yeah. Well, if you've been cooking long enough, you can kind of eyeball it. You <laughs> see chefs do that on TV all the time. So these are all my flowers all mixed together. All my dry ingredients are going to be separate from the wet ingredients. So what I'm going to do now is just sort of whisk this together or just mix it up here so it all gets incorporated. It already smells good. All right. And look at how riveted Jimmy is. He's just fascinated by this whole process. And with that sitting there, I'm going to cream together my butter. And if we were baking normally, we would do sugar. But since we're doing sugar-free baking, we're going to cream together our butter and our sugar replacement, which in this case is a product uh, called um, Golden Monk Fruit Sweetener. So monk fruit is a fruit from China and the sweetness or some part of it is extracted. It's like an actual really long Chinesey name that I can't pronounce. Did you just say Chinese? I did. Are you um, Snoop Dogg all of a sudden? I can't pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try, but um, it, uh, it's way sweeter than sugar and it doesn't spike your blood glucose. Because it's so sweet, they actually cut it with erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. All of these things are safe for diabetics as well. So that is just going to cream together until it's like light and fluffy. And while that's doing that, I'm going to grease my pan so that my pumpkins 
when I put the batter in so that nothing sticks and everything comes out. What you got there? This is coconut oil. Um, anybody who's interested, I don't really want to go crazy in too much detail, but I buy my coconut oil in glass rather than in plastic. Um, just because when they um, expel the oil from the coconut, when they press it, oftentimes it's hot and you don't want heat going into a plastic. It's just got all the chemicals and stuff could leach in. And so I always try to find coconut oil in a glass bottle. I don't know if it really Everything makes in a, a glass difference. bottle tastes better. I don't know if it really makes a difference or if I'm really saving myself the chemicals when I'm going to go walk outside full of air pollution. But, you know, it's just one little thing. So it's one thing that I look for. And this coconut oil is pretty solid. So I'm actually just going to um, dump it out, a little bit out. And then I'm going to heat it up a little bit so that I can use it. You need access to the microwave? Yeah. Well, you get to the microwave. I got to play my little Galaga game. Nice. It's hard to do one handed. Uh. I just wanted it That's stopped. the first time anybody on the video has ever seen my microwave ever used. Well, now they know it works. Yeah, so. we got to clear the time because my OCD will bother there me if we don't clear the time. So I'm just going to take my coconut oil in my hand. It's just soft enough to work with. And I'm just putting it in all the little nooks and crannies of my pan. Squirrel. Also, everybody should know that I washed my hands very thoroughly before we started. <laughs> I don't want anybody getting concerned. Too late. <laughs> All right. How old is that 1950s looking mixer? Okay, that mixer belonged to our grandmother. And when our grandmother passed away, she gave the mixer to our mother. And right before our mother passed away, she gave the mixer to me. So this You're mixer is really special. because of that window. Damn it. So that mixer is a 1950s. It's actually older than that, huh? Yeah. All right. If mom or grandma were built as good as that mixer, they'd still be around today. That's true. I'm also just dusting the pan with a little extra coconut flour now that I've got it oiled. And now that our butter has creamed with the sugar, it's light and fluffy if you want to see what the, you want to show what the butter looks like now. It's all light and fluffy. So now what we're gonna do is add our dry flour mixture in two parts, and in between, we're gonna add the pumpkin flavor, or the okay. pumpkin puree. So I'm gonna turn this way down now. Man, that's loud. Yeah, well. So I'm gonna let that cream together for a few minutes, and while that's happening, we're gonna throw the pumpkin in. That's just canned pumpkin? This is just canned pumpkin, yep. Plain, regular canned pumpkin. I forgot to add the eggs and the vinegar, so we're gonna take a break from that for a second. 
I'm gonna throw in my two teaspoons of vinegar, just here, apple cider vinegar. And then I'm gonna add my eggs one at a time. How many eggs? Total of four eggs. That's a lot of eggs. So just like I was letting the flour get in there, I'm going to just put an egg in. Look at you do that one-handed, I am impressed. I tried that once. <laughs> going to drop an egg in, kind of let it incorporate a little bit. Drop another egg in. There we go. Now I feel all this pressure to do it one-handed and I'm just like Lyle normal. Lyle is fascinated with you right now. Because I'm cooking. He's licking his chop. Both of them are there. They're like, oh my God, this is my favorite show on right now. Mm. Oh, he's getting closer. All right. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit here. Excuse me. All right. Do you have like a, a rubber spatula? In that drawer right to your right. I'm just going to get all the scrape down the sides and then I'm gonna go back to adding my flour and my pumpkin some more. Some more of the flour and some more of the pumpkin. This is 220 grams of pumpkin puree going in, in case I didn't mention it before. And once again, we will link this recipe to the site. Yeah, and that'll also, be in the video notes. Also, I'm going to have Carrie include a link to that pan too, because the pan is really cool. And pricey. But like the mixer, it'll probably last generations, right? Not sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. I actually have an affinity for all of my pans. I have a ton of loaf pans, cake pans, and my boyfriend is under strict orders to bury me with all of my pans. That's the deal. <laughs> Assuming I go first. Of course. <laughs> okay, this is all mixed up and ready to go into the oven. So I'm just going to pour it in the loaf pan. And this thing takes forever to bake, so we should be able to just focus on the computer. So I should set the timer to forever? Forever. Um, I think 70 minutes is a good okay. start. I made a mess. 70 minutes is a good start. We're gonna check on it after, because we've never baked in your oven before. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna check on it after minute 15. If it's starting to turn golden, we're gonna cover it with tin foil so it doesn't brown too much. Aluminum foil, they don't make tin foil anymore. Aluminum foil, so it doesn't uh, brown too much and then we'll let it continue to finish its baking process. Okay. All right. I got a little timer. Don't you have a timer right there? Yeah, but I, I like this timer. Okay, so we can... 70, huh? Well, let's first set it for 15. Oh, okay. So that I can check on it. It's running. And I'm just putting all the banner batter into the pan. Now, while this is baking, we're going to build a computer. Well, where else are you going to see that on any other tech channel? Self-sufficient self-reliance from baking to building, from building to baking. It's all right here. What more could you want? And unlike Carrie's food, my food won't give you diabetes. How about that? Your food will just give you diarrhea. Not me. Maybe you. Because it's healthy. Your body's going to reject <laughs> it's it. It's going to reject it. 
I have to have a steady, regular diet of, of grease and oil, or my body will go into toxic shock. Well, grease and oil is keto. <laughs> Neato. All right, so it's going in. Top shelf, bottom shelf, doesn't matter. Um, probably just do it in the middle. So just this is center it. pretty middle to me. Okay. Here we go. And now I'll switch cameras and we can get ready to build. And we'll just periodically stop and check on the cooking and. Okay, but my OCD doesn't like this mess. Okay, you can clean that mess. I'm gonna switch cameras. Okay. Click. There we are. Uh, Did we lose there. everybody? <laughs> we have 470 people watching live right now. To those of us that have joined in, welcome, welcome. Boy, I hope this bread turns out. <laughs> so I have done some investigation into creating a separate channel for subscribers. It is very early very early in the uh, developmental stage. I have a lot of questions that have to be answered. And um, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is a $3 a month subscription. And the only way people will be able to chat or see a live broadcast will be through, uh, it'll be outside of YouTube. And then about a week or two after the broadcast is aired, it'll be made available on YouTube for free. Uh, maybe even edited down. We're still looking at that. And I think I'll solve a lot of problems that way. It'll get rid of the trolls. It gives people early access to content. And uh, the people who then are participating in chat will be people who support the channel. And we'll do probably the first 60 or 90 days will probably be free for everybody so I can work out any bugs in the system make sure everything works and can handle the demand and understand what my bandwidth costs are going to be versus what the subscription rate is going to be uh, along with server, you know, cloud storage for the files. It's a lot of work. Uh, the alternative is to go to a pre-existing platform like Vimeo or Floatplane, but uh, I'm so sick and tired of people profiting off of my hard work. Um, it's really just a question of which one's going to make me more money. So that's what I'm looking into right now. That's the direction I'm going. If you have any concerns or feedback or ideas concerning uh, making that more appealing, certainly open to any suggestions because I don't, I've never done it before. I may have to code the website myself or hire somebody to code the website so that I can do basically what you see here on YouTube. There won't be any donations. You know, once you subscribe, that's it. Um, there'll be a live chat, the video, just like you're seeing now. <clears throat> and, um, It'll be available to subscribers only, and YouTube will only be pre-recorded videos a week or two after they've originally aired for the subscriber. That's the concept, that's the idea, and we'll see what happens. Today's video is being brought to you by Colin Hilton. Colin Hilton has made a generous contribution, uh, which is not unusual. He's a very generous supporter out of England. And it, 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 it's difficult to find sponsors without conditions. And so I am proud to say that the sponsor for today's video is Colin Hilton. So say thank you, if you don't mind, to Colin, who's joined us here in the chat. Five hundred and four people are watching. Now, my sister, Linda, somebody asked if you were my wife. No, we don't live in Alabama. Oh, there go my Alabama viewers. <laughs> Do they have internet in Alabama? I think you're all right. I think they just got color TV. Yeah, you should be okay. That's racist. Uh, we're going to, uh, I, I'm going to have her build the computer with, uh, with me supervising. It's not her first rodeo. A lot of people are saying $5 a month. Yeah, I want to, I think $3 a month is fair. I want to try and match basically what Twitch is doing, but make it better. Twitch is really for gamers, and um, you know, probably one out of five, maybe, Twitch stream, uh, Twitch viewers is interested in what I do, and it certainly is more of a younger demographic. So I just want to just build my own. You know, 
I, it's the best way I can explain it. Where can I buy some of that Colin Hilton? Now we got internet. Colin uh, isn't something you buy, it's something you adopt. It's a philosophy. He's not a rich man, but he's a generous man and a thoughtful and considerate one. Okay, you ready to get started? Ready yep. to get put to, put to work? I think so. Okay, Let what we've know. got here is uh, this computer is going to a gentleman named Andrew in Pennsylvania. Hi, Andrew in Pennsylvania. Hi, Andrew in Pennsylvania. Now, Andrew is a seasoned computer tech himself, and he could easily do this himself. But he thought, wouldn't it be fun to contribute to the channel and let Carrie do my work, and I can see my build being done. And, you know, it cost him extra money. He spent uh, $260 in shipping his parts to me. Wow. Normally, I have a customer order parts and ship directly to me. But in this case, he had the parts shipped to himself in Pennsylvania. Then now those parts boxed up and then shipped to me. Like this box, he was really concerned that this box was going to arrive damaged because it went from California to Pennsylvania back to Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> and it's perfect. There's nothing wrong. This is... Uh, it's packed, right? This has a, uh, a badge on it. There's only 2,000 of these made. As far as I know, they're sold out. They're gone. I got four of them in the house right now, which is what makes me feel pretty special. Having four are a, a limited 2,000. This is number 1193, which it states right back here on this badge. And um, there's no front panel on here, so there's no DVD or optical drive. And this tends to be the way certain case manufacturers have adopted this, like uh, NZXT, uh, who makes this. They've sort of gone, gotten rid of the optical drive, and, and for gamers and such, it's fine. For businesses, not so much, depending on the needs of the user. Some consumers uh, still want optical drives. But I never they, use mine. Mine is only It's in the not way. something you use all the time, but when you need it, you need it. That's true. You can always get a USB optical drive. They're just a few dollars more. They're not prohibitively expensive. Right. Uh, some people just like the convenience. They don't have to go find it. But anyway, um, I'm trying to figure out where we're going to start. I've already prepped the case. I've taken the little bobblehead out. It's the same bobblehead, Vault Boy. Case is themed on a video game called Fallout. Little known 3. game. You I think it's have Fallout heard 3, of. right? Fallout 3? It's Fallout 4, I think. Is, is it Fallout 4 that's coming out any day now? I can't keep track. I, I just know it's Fallout. I wasn't aware we're, of it. We're old. Was. We're both old. <laughs> we're, we work for a living. We'd rather make money than play games. But I'll that play being Gears said, of War. I'll play Gears of War all day long. I'll play Duke Nukem all day long. <laughs> I'll play Unreal Tournament 3. <laughs> what? What? I'll play Unreal Tournament. Is that the one with the sheep? The what? The one with the sheep where you could turn it's somebody... Flat in... Cannon. No, where you and, could turn somebody into sheep. I like to camp in November. In November, the level called November, which it deals oh. with submarines, I find a way to get way up on the top of a pillar with my back against the wall, and I just aim down at people coming for my flag, and I shoot them in the back. Is that an Unreal? Unreal Tournament. Is that the one with the sheep? No. Well, you didn't answer my question. I said it's, I, I was correcting you. All right, now, so let's get to building. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Can we move these measuring cups? I don't think we'll be needing them. Yes. I need, um, if anybody knows what I video need game it is gigs that you turn RAM. people into sheep, that would be awesome. It was like, you know, midnight. Fallout 76, that's what I was trying to think of. Thank nice. you. Fallout 4, I think, is what, uh, is what uh, Nuka Cola is based on, isn't it? I, they, they sell the uh, the little gun that she's... Nuka-Cola goes all gun? the way to Fallout 1. Oh, it goes back to Fallout 1? I didn't know that. So this, this little gun, you can buy that on Amazon. I was going to buy it as a prop today, but it's like $27, and that seems like a lot of money to pay for a one-time For use a one-time prop? That nobody's going to get. We could just um, go and Photoshop a label and affix it over the Coca-Cola label. See that? They put my name on this one. <laughs> oh, nice. See that? Foot. Leg end. Isn't a foot a leg end? All right, I'm gonna just do what I do because this is not working. No. That was wow, terrible. I never heard a cricket that loud before. <laughs> crickets? How could you hear the crickets over the tumbleweeds? <laughs> what? I can't hear you over the tumbleweeds. All right, he sent me two coolers, both a uh, Kraken X62 and uh, H115i, because he's afraid the Kraken may interfere with his RAM. And he said that, uh, use one or the other and keep the other one, I don't want it back. 
That's my kind of guy. Thank you, Andrew. Mm. Andrew even sent me zip ties. How nice is that? He's like, here, here's 104 inch zip ties and 108 inch zip ties. That's exactly what I use. I use four inch and eight inch zip ties. I mean, granted, they're only like $3 a bag, but it's very thoughtful. Yeah, he's so, paying attention. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We're going to use an EVGA Supernova 850G2 power supply. All the parts for this build are already listed in the parts description below the video. World of Warcraft has polymorph, which turns people into sheep, but it's not 90s. Yeah, it's not World of Warcraft. It was... Rich says I shouldn't quit my day job, <sighs> but what if that is my day job? God, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely a 90s game because I remember when I worked in tech support in the late 90s, all of the, my fellow techs were playing it on our LAN. They were playing World of Warcraft? No, this game where you turn people into sheep. And they just said that was World of Warcraft. It's not World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft may have it, but that's not what I'm thinking of. And I can never... I find people game. are just already sheep, so I don't know how you turn people that are <laughs> sheep into <laughs> sheep when they're already sheep. Yeah, well, I'm it's a th video game. thankful that they sent this bag that they put in this box that was shipped in a box that was also in a box. What would you put in the bag? Extra cables? Well, this is a modular power supply, so we've got a big, thick power cable. Now, you're a cook. Why can't I eat this? Because you get really thirsty, I'm guessing. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is... Um, put on some pretzels, you'll be good to go. The reason it says, do not eat, I've researched this. And this is because not this is an inert chemical. Yeah, it probably won't hurt you. But you could choke on it. Oh. This is why we can't have Kinder Eggs. This you're the reason. You're the reason we can't have Kinder Eggs. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Would you do me a favor and pick that up? Nope. <laughs> uh, Velcro. Now, if only the power it's supply came in a bag. <laughs> These are the instructions. We'll put those over there. Oh, thank God they put the power supply in a bag. <laughs> I bet it's in another box, too. Oh, well, nope, that's good. There's always a little, you can't barely see it. And you don't have to remove it, especially when you sell it to the next guy, because when he removes it, it'll be like he'll have oh, a brand new power like supply. Brand new. So I say, why don't you remove it? It's your power supply. And it just covers the logo. They, the manufacturers all agree, you can scratch up the power supply, just don't scratch the company logo. Oh. So there's that. And let's see, I don't know what we're supposed to do with this bag. Ask Linda if it was called Hearthstone or Heartstone. I'm not sure, was Hearthstone like um, some kind of a big LAN party type multiplayer game? The Verusian Kalistin has contributed one dollar. I'm sorry I butchered your name. I don't know what we're supposed to do with that. <laughs> it's a throwing bag, right? It's a throwing bag. Oh look, two throwing bags. Maybe I'm supposed to put that bag in this bag and then put this bag in this box and I put this box in the other box and, and then, then put you that throw box it. and then I ship it. Oh, and then you ship it. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's very inception of them. They are incepting you. You know whose idea this was? Christopher Nolan. He's behind all of it. <laughs> this is a self-tester. Uh, not a tester. I think this just turns the power supply on. It looks like an adapter. No, I think it just turns the power supply on. What? Yeah, so like if you wanted to... Because the power supply gets flipped on and off with a sensor from the motherboard. A switch on the motherboard. And I think this just shorts the power supply out to turn it on. It doesn't... Okay, your 15 minutes are up. You want to check the bread? It looks like it would go... No, 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 no. It goes... No. Okay. I'm not going to argue with no. you. No. So, it's the, I think I'm going to give it... I want to check it again in 10 more minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah. Good to go. All right. Okay. Maybe I need to put a link to the timer. Everything I touch, I have to link. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like Nobody you. wants that. <laughs> uh, screws for the power supply. Thank you for your donation, Irving. Oh, Irving's watching us from France. Oh, bonjour. Uh, five, uh, oh, bonsoir. 
five euro. Hi, Linda. I'm glad to see you again. Take care, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Irving. Always good to see Irving. Mm -hmm. He's not. He's not French Canadian. He's real French. He's like not French light. Right. Yeah. He's the only one I know that's from France. That's and if he can understand chat. my French, then a miracle has just happened. Let me just Although mine put was pretty this simple. with the rest of the silicon. Of your grossness. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's wet. Okay, so here's how we're going to start. We're going to remove this side panel. Come around here. <clears throat> one of the difficult things that you'll often see me do is struggle to get the side panel put on mm -hmm. because of the cables. There's a little button. Would you push that for me? That was easy. Yeah. Just and call that the easy button. Imagine when your cable management's all there, and all you do is you just push it on. Simple. Right? Yeah. Because you're pushing Very it down nice. anyway. It's not like packing an overstuffed suitcase. So we need to put this away because it's beautiful. And it don't want it to get scratched or knocked or kicked or dented. Did so. you just me too her? <laughs> I feel like you just me tooed her. Well, we won't tell if you won't. Well, she asked for it. Oh, of course. Look what she's wearing. Now, we also have to remove the glass side panel. And there go a bunch of people, your subscribers. You've just offended me. <laughs> I offended them? Come for the offense. No, I did. Oh. When I said she asked for it. Oh. And stay for the insults. Yes. Okay. And then all we have to offer when all is said and done is some sugar-free bread. Mmm. Totally <laughs> worth it. It's totally worth it. It's starting to smell good, though. Now, this glass panel is just going to pull straight off. And I don't need, I like to ship with the plastic on it for the customer's protection, but I think we can safely go ahead and remove the inner plastic here. Should be no reason to keep that on. Right. I can't think of a reason. And that's a real pain in the glass. Yeah, I'm gonna you put that over turn here. this into an ASMR channel and just do that all day. Get real close to the microphone and do it. Instant ASMR. Is this Windows? What are you, the little paper clip? Clippy. Clippy. What are we going to call the paper clip? Uh, Fred, how about Clippy? All right, let's go to Dutch. Scratch, dead, kicked, knocked over, stepped on. The dogs won't lick them. Somebody wants to know where they can get the case. You can't. Oh, well. There you go. The case is sold out as far as I know. They only made 2000 They were. It's a $150 case with a $150 paint job. Well, it's more than a paint job. You see this, this has been added and up here they've added a little uh, a fallout design. Um, this is gonna light up in white down here. I need you to remove this uh, frame. It's gonna house our power supply. It's a little tight. Um, have you got a screwdriver for me? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Things have gotten so busy. Um, my sister's going to join me uh, in growing the channel. So I think you'll see her more often on the channel. She can do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. She'll do editing. She'll look for sponsors. She'll uh, bake thumbnails. She'll, um, well, you don't know what you got yourself into. Yeah. She's, I'm looking into having screwdrivers custom made with bits that we could offer for sale. I'm I sorry, really, who's looking into that? You are. Exactly. <laughs> Donnie Seegers contributed $5. He says, glad you're back. Oh, thanks, Donnie. Yeah, I really wanted to be live Friday and Thursday, but life happens and life decided otherwise, and I had to take care of some things. And um, You wouldn't want to see me then. I was very upset and very distracted and hard for me to focus. But that being said, uh, things are better for now. Now, I want you to take the power supply right over there, along with the screws, and I want you to mount it to the frame, and then you're going to put the frame back on the case. Now, these screws, I should have watched you, these screws are designed to be captured. You see there's a gap between Is that the... why I had to work so hard to get them out? Yeah, they're Except designed... They're working on that. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I need to watch you. You see? <laughs> yeah. Some, and it's inconsistent because I don't think there's anything else on the case like that. I could be mistaken. 
It's always a nice touch when manufacturers do this. Yeah, that's nice. Right? Now I feel bad for working so hard to get them out. Well, you've never done it before, <laughs> so you're forgiven. It didn't cause any harm. Sharon says you're just trying to get more viewers by including a pretty girl. Damn straight I am. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. I mean, I nice. might be a little stupid, but... Uh, if you can't trust your sister with the family business, well, it's, it's a family business now, I guess. It is now. Um, we're going to turn it into one. We're going to try and build, build upon what we already have and expand and grow and make more content more often and really uh, try to uh, build a community here. Really emphasize that. Support one another. Uh, share our experiences. And... Um, it's just, you know, the internet's like a big dumpster. Sometimes you get in there and there's somebody threw away something perfectly good, <laughs> you know? There's a lot of junk and a lot of garbage, but every once in a while you're like, I can't believe someone threw this away. It's <laughs> perfectly fine. So I got four new chairs that way. <laughs> right? So all I'm don't saying think, is... Don't take any couches. All, yeah. All I'm saying is, um, well, we can't change the dumpster. We can at least put a little more value of what's being thrown in there. <laughs> Are you... As long as is we that, don't set it on fire and make it roll. Dumpster fire. <laughs> Every video I make is a dumpster fire. Well, that can't be right. It's got to go this way. All right. That's how I had it. We want the power <laughs> supply with the fan facing down. This fan sucks air in. It doesn't blow air out. Okay. And it's going to go in here and it's going to come out here. So the air never enters the case. Is it cooling it before it, or what is it? It's bringing air in from outside. You see how there's a filter down here? Oh, neat. So it's important you have clearance under here. If you put this on shag carpeting, it's which is all the rage the right now, you have a very expensive vacuum cleaner and you're suffocating your power supply. Mm -hmm. Always make sure your power supply is roomed to breathe and always check and blow out the dust and dirt twice a year. If you have a filter that's clogged, you might as well not have the filter. It's as bad as having no filter at all. Right. So people always promote, you know, you should have a filter, but if you don't know you've got it or you haven't cleaned it, you're better off without one. I didn't even know this was a thing. This is why I don't have a filter. <laughs> now, uh, with the fan facing down, again, air is going to come in here and go out here. Okay. 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 And this can go on this way or this way. I don't really think it matters. I think either, either way is going to work. Okay. So we're going to grab the screws that came with the power supply. And you're going to notice, I want you to look at the power supply. Mm-hmm. You see there's a, a hole for a screw here. Mm -hmm. That's going to line up if you went this way. Or it isn't. That one's going to... See how the... So the holes no, are... There off, so there's, they're offset. They're not all... Notice these two holes mm -hmm. are going to be the opposite here. But mm -hmm. those... Uh, same with these two. Right? If we flip this the other way. So this power supply has eight places to put four screws, depending on if you mount it with the fan up or the fan down. Some people mount it with the fan up. The problem with mounting with the fan up is if you drop a screw, it goes right inside of your power supply Ooh, and you're messed. That's bad. If you have a liquid cooler and it leaks inside your power supply, that's bad. you're up a creek. Uh, a liquid Do we cooler know how creek. much this power supply goes for? Uh, this is probably about a $100 power supply, I would guess. Somewhere in a $100 range. I think somebody in the chat can click the link. And um, again, I don't really think it matters which way you put this in. It's going to install, for this particular case, uh, different cases install power supplies in different ways, so they sue each other for stealing each other's ideas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, what you're going to do is you're going to figure out a way you want to put this on, which I think should be this way. Usually, the the top offset screw, the offset screw is usually on the top in previous builds. And um, so, do we screw it on first before we put the? Well, wait a minute, I'm confused now because it's not lining up. This one lines up. And this one lines up, but this one doesn't. Oh, that's interesting. Do I have it backwards? Or does it? I'm so confused right now. Give me a second. Yeah, that one lines up. Oh, While you're figuring check. that, I'm going to check on the bread. Okay. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells like falling here. 
I'm gonna let it go for another 10 minutes. So I, I, so confused. I can't remember how this came out, but it looks like it wants to go on the other way. Whoopsie, I'll get that. It doesn't line up this way, which is weird. Because my instincts tell me, whatever my instincts tell me, it usually is the other way around. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. So here's the, here's what I'm looking at. If I turn this around this way, you see how that hole lines up, that one lines up. That one lines up there. Mm-hmm. That one's there, so it goes that way. Let me look at this other case. What I'm curious about is if these intents face out like that. I thought they would go in. Oh, they do face out. Ha! Well, there we go. So when you took the screws out, but when I put them back in, there's only two ways I could have put them back in. I put them back in on the wrong of side. Of course. Of course I did. That is genetic. Is it? Yeah. So that what I'm referring to, if you look, there's little bumps. And I thought that the screws would go in and recess, but they don't. And it doesn't line up right. That's why I was kind of puzzled why it wasn't lining up, because power supplies all have the uh, mounting holes in the same place, so it didn't make any sense. Now it makes sense. When you do it the right way, suddenly it's like, oh, well, that makes sense. Are we resetting the timer? I did, yes, for 10 more minutes. Wow, I didn't even show you how. It's just a timer. It's not that hard. It's just a timer. It's just a timer. Okay. So, get to work. Chop, chop. So I have to put the screws in now, or do I put the power supply in first? You put the screws in. Okay. And then when the power supply is on the frame, you'll be able to slide it in and tighten the thumb screws down. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Rich Robin says he thought, thought he saw a light bulb turn on. For you? Yeah. Well, I've been told I was bright. I was also told I was dim. I don't know who to believe. <laughs> no, no, that's not even going in. Do you need glasses? I'm wearing contacts, so. Wow. Can you see the difference between these holes and this hole? Oh, now I can. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Sorry. I actually am having a hard time with my eyes lately. Probably need to go get my eyes looked at again. Rumor has it that Microsoft will re-release version 1809 next week. That probably sounds about right. Remember, if you ever lose data, no matter how or why, it's always your fault. I'm Please. not going to sit here and justify Microsoft's oversight and how they handled it, but the bottom line remains, if you don't have backups, you're going to lose the data one way or the other. So if it's important to you, back it up. If it wasn't important enough to back up, then it's not important enough to whine about. I get so sick and tired of it. Just because the Microsoft update, and by the way, I don't know anybody who actually lost any data from it, but people apparently did. But if those people would have had backups, it would have been no big deal. And they're going to lose their data. Yeah. One way or another, it just so happened that that happened first. If you don't there'd backup. be ransomware, there'd be a hard drive failure, there'd be a theft, there'd be a fire, there'd be a I've been around long enough, I've seen it all. Just make copies of the important stuff, folks. The bottom line is if the data isn't important enough for you to take five minutes Well, to it could take it longer than five minutes, but the point is it's, if it was that important to you, you should have made copies of it because you just never know, and that's why you make copies of it. Yep. You cannot put so much trust in technology or you're in for a lifetime of disappointment. <laughs> Seriously. You know, technology is great to help, but you can't just blindly put all your faith in it uh, unless you would like to be disappointed. Yeah, never tighten the screws all the yeah, way down. We'll always leave that. them a little bit loose so you can wiggle things around. Once they all get started, you know, then you can tighten them down. Rich Robin says his backup takes about five minutes. Yeah, yeah it sort of depends on uh, how much data you've got, how you're backing it up. But, but basically, 
you know, you gotta, you're going to lose the data. If you don't have a backup, it's just a matter of time. If it's not a Windows update, it's a virus, it's an accidental deletion, it's a hardware failure, it's a corruption, then it goes on and on and on and on and on. So, so for people to sit there and whine and complain about it is just silly. You're not a, the only person you're a victim of is yourself. Nobody can replace your data, and your data is not important to anybody but you. So if you don't back it up, it's just a matter of time before something takes it out. Whether it was a Windows update is irrelevant. It just may have been the, the thing that affected you this time, but what's going to affect you next time? There will always be a next time. As long as you don't have a backup, there will always be a next time. All right, power supply is going in. Okay, fan is down. Fan is down. Excellent. Slide that puppy in there. And we're not going to tighten it down because we're gonna take it back out in a minute. Oh. Okay, so there's a power supply. You can see the way they designed this. What's really cool about this design, you see all these holes up here? You can squeeze this and you can take this out and you can move it over here. Or you can move, it, you can move your, your solid state drives wherever you want them to be. Very cool. Right? So we're gonna take all these out for a moment. We're just gonna get them out of the way. And I'll just set them over here. And we can start to uh, prep the motherboard. I want to make sure I get all the plastic removed. These NZXT fans are actually very quiet. There's a, there was a some lot question of as to whether or not they should replace them with higher quality fans, but I found them to run whisper silent. So I say leave them alone. They're good. Yeah. Yeah. So we can now. Let me throw that away. We're gonna prep the motherboard. Oh, we've got all of our cables and everything right here for the front umbilicals. I'm gonna leave them here for now. We do need this little box of screws out. This contains all of the mounting hardware for this specific case to be filled with hardware components of your choosing. Now, we probably won't be using all of them, so we're gonna save all the extras and keep them for future upgrades and repairs that may happen you know, next year or 10 years from now. So whatever you do, put them away where you can find them because you're not going to need them for a long time. These are the instructions that come with the case, and we'll put those with the rest of the instructions. And the box, that goes right where the boxes go. The throwing box. Okay. And so inside of this bag are a number of other bags that were in the box that were in the case that was in a box. That right. was shipped in another box. Of course. Right. Has one Christopher does. Nolan! Um, yeah. Let me go over there. Okay, so we. What did just, you just throw over there? Um, we'll get to that. Okay. These are just uh, nylon zip ties. Always a nice touch when a case manufacturer includes them because you will need them. And look at the cable management here. I mean, it's so awesome. It makes life so much easier. That is amazing. Yeah, and if you don't like it, if you're one of these purists, you just take a Phillips screwdriver and you take all these tracks out. But I have to question your sanity if you don't like this. And then we've got room for even more. So right, there's two more parts for SSDs, plus the three I took out, that's five SSDs, plus a space for two mechanical drives. I'm gonna sound like I'm an NZXT shill, but honestly, I like it. So I guess I'm not allowed to like things. Mm -hmm. If I like something, I'm a shill, and if I don't like something, go carry. So how about if I don't like all the other case manufacturers? Because this is so brilliant. The fact is there are other case manufacturers that have good cases. Um, this is the one I have in front of me right now. It's a beautiful case. About. I don't see how you can not like this case. Uh, some people, the design may not be for them. I get it. Uh, the design fits my personality really well. Yeah. And up here at the top, we've got uh, four USB ports, two USB 2s, two USB 3s, a power button with a light around it, a hard drive LED, uh, speakers, headphones, reset switch. This is just for looks. It matches this right here, which is awesome. This is just a, some fallout. Um, design. Yeah, we'll call it that. Okay. Now, time for motherboard prep. Man, how are we, how we doing on the bread? It's smelling so good. It's got 28 seconds, so I'm going to check it now. Okay. When you do that, I'm going to start getting the stuff for the motherboard prep. Okay. It's starting to turn brown. I'm going to. Oh, go it smells. Amazing. I'm going to cover it with foil, but I need some pot holders. Right here, pot holders. Thank you. 
You recognize those? Yeah, they're the same ones I have. So for this build, we're using a case that's made by the case. We're using a case that's made by the case. This is why you need a script, Carrie. We're using a motherboard that's made by the case manufacturer. This is NZXT's N7 motherboard. Rumor has it it's actually made by ECS, who I'm not a fan of. I don't know if that's true or not, and I don't care. Because all support goes through NZXT, and it's built to NZXT specifications. So um, we're going to go with that. Now, I've never used a motherboard by a case manufacturer before. And we'll see how this works. I'm just going to show off how pretty the... Is it done? It's not done, but it is pretty, the color. It's this color. Now I'm going to put some foil on it. So Look at how it just rose right to the very top of the pan. How did it know to stop there? <laughs> so I'm going to put some foil on it so it can keep cooking, but it'll stop browning. We don't want it to get any darker than this. All right. Do you have foil? Yeah, I have foil right here. Thank you. Okay, I want to take the motherboard out of the box. So here I've got the board in its own box, and then below that, we have the cables, IO shield, and components that are included with all boards, including the documentation, and uh, driver, the CD, DVD, SATA cables. IO shield, we can go ahead and put the IO shield in right now. Got extra standoffs. Standoffs don't typically come with a motherboard. They come with a case. So this is probably for the motherboard cover, which I'm going to talk about here in just a minute. And you're making a lot of noise over there. I'm sorry. Deliciousness is happening. So we know that this has already been going for 35 minutes. I haven't been keeping track. I've been in my head, so I could be wrong, but I think it's been 35. We're an hour and one minute on the broadcast. Well, but we took time to mix everything and everything. Correct. So I wonder if it's been going for 45 minutes. So I think that I'm going to set the timer for another 30, well, I'll set it for 25 minutes and I'll check it. Here's the IO shield for the motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and install this really quick. Uh, the holes for the speakers always go down. If you get it wrong, you just pop it out and turn it around the other way. It's a friction fit, and it does require a little coordination that you get all these um, edges in. Every corner has to pop into place. And I see a lot of first-time builders really struggle with that. And if you're a first-time builder, be patient. I make it look easy because I've done it a million times. When you do it a million times, it'll be easy for you. When you do it the first or second time, take your time. Make sure it's flush and level across the, all four corners. And usually, if you can't see it, you can feel it with your finger that it's, you know, the amount that's sticking out uh, is level and equal all the way around. If not, uh, make it right. Now, this motherboard's a bit different in the sense that <clears throat> it has a motherboard cover on it. Now, a motherboard cover is completely and entirely useless, pointless, and unnecessary, but it looks cool. And so, kind of like me, I want to see a motherboard cover. Take cut on that. Set that over there. A viewer did warn me to watch out for flying debris. Definitely wouldn't want to be hit with debris today. Not today. Well, they like their packing. <laughs> So glad we're so ecologically minded in this evolved time that we live in. My eye. So this is a motherboard cover. You see how it's covering the motherboard? <laughs> Look. See wow, that? that's cool. No, it's not cool. I think it's cool. It's not cool. Why is it not cool? Because it doesn't match our case. It doesn't match the case. Yeah. This is a motherboard cover specifically built for that motherboard. Now it's going to be cool. Oh, that is much better. I think it's cool on its own, but now that you've shown me a better alternative, then yeah. Ignorance is bliss. Isn't it? Yes, it is. So here's our new motherboard cover. They only made 400 of these. So they made 2,000 of these and 400 of these. What's the purpose of the cover anyway? 
Didn't I just tell you? I was probably dealing with the bread. Ooh, good hit. It's to make it look pretty. Okay. That's all it does. There's it's no not protecting it or. Well, I suppose you could. You could convince yourself it's protecting it, but when it's in the case and the covers are on the case, it's protected. Man, it's like a minefield around here. I just want to turn that back. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this sells for 50 bucks. This motherboard is about $280, I want to say. The case is 300 So you usually have $600 tied up just wow. with these three components. But when you go to a LAN party or someone comes over to your house, they're going to see something they unlikely are going to see anyplace else. For some people, that's important, from the car they drive to the clothes they wear. And, um, yeah. Like, if you're not going to use these slots, you can, these covers come off or they go on. See, there's, there's slots here. Mm -hmm. Recovering them keeps the dust out, but mostly it's just for looks. <clears throat> I have no idea why this piece is here. But not on the one. That, is it this? Hmm? Is it this? Oh. Okay, that makes more sense. There you go. Yeah, thank you. I was yep. thinking that went over the CPU. That I'm like, that doesn't. It's make only sense. my first time. Um, now the cover has got to come off. There's a sticker right there to remove cover. Oh. And there's stickers here. Oh no! You got to remove the cover to, for the, to access that connector. Oh, so it's not telling so you how just, to remove the cover. So that's just that's just a piece. Start right. I think you just pull up on it. Yeah, it just pops in. That's that piece. Let me give everybody a little close up of this since they're watching from a distance. It's a very attractive looking motherboard. Now, there are motherboards that sell for less money that offer more features, but they're just not going to match aesthetically to the case. Anything like this one. They said, thank God it's not in 3D. They had to be ducking. You'd be they? dodging. <laughs> And this one should come off too. And that's just covering a heat shield. But I like how that's really well built. It just pops yeah. in like a uh, Own little rivet. It's incredibly built well. And this piece, um, this piece right here, does that also just pop off or how does that it come off? It looks like it has. Or does it screw down? I don't know. Normally, regular people read the instructions. But why would I do that? I see a metal standoff right here. How do we get to that? So these are the individual covers for uh, PCI slots underneath these two areas, right? And there's one. I don't know that it's necessary to pull those. Oh, they're not, they cover the M.2 drives. Yep. Okay, that's cool. It also covers a diagnostic LED. Who needs that? I feel like this is, this is a different part. This this part stays. I think. Yeah, it looks like this is all. Yeah, this is an IO shield cover. One separate piece. So here. this piece, I'm just looking at this one. How does this one attach? A I see a hole, a hole, a hole. It looks like it has these. But yeah, these are the hands. mounting holes. There's a little Yeah, I think it just pops off. Let's see. This makes me nervous. Should I hold? So it doesn't fall? Hmm. What am I missing? Okay, let me just take a look at this. I am missing something. There's a screw right there. And a screw right here. Okay, that's holding on the I.O. shield cover. Okay. We're going to leave that, right? Yeah, that's not moving. I see a couple of posts here and here that appear to be holding on a heat sink. And you have four here. That's a heat sink. So is there a plastic lever sticking out somewhere? I don't see one. I've never, ever done this before. Yeah, we can tell. I see, you see this metal post right here? Mm -hmm. That's clearly connected to this cover. What you never want to do with a computer is you never want to force anything. Everything should be very... Um, Everything should fit like a glove. If it doesn't fit right, you're probably doing it wrong. Sometimes it requires a little teeny tiny bit, but not too much. There we go. It 
it's really just in there pretty tight. Still not going to RTFM, huh? Nope. After 27 years of doing this, if I can't figure it out from experience, it's a pretty messed up design. Oh. It looks like you're having to really kind of work pretty hard. Like... Well, I'm trying to be gentle and, and I'm not applying any more force. See, well, like when I lifted that, I didn't like the way in. that sounded. So I have to change where I'm lifting from. I don't really want to get a, a screwdriver in there because I, I don't want to gouge anything. Is yeah, this part you can, of it? Yeah, that's a part of it. And that's what's holding it in place. I see. And I need to just, it's just like a snap together and I have to unsnap it, but without snapping the motherboard. There's probably an easier way. I'm not known for doing things the easy way. And again, I've never done this before. So that's the cover. And I'm gonna show everybody what was holding that on. Right here, there are these metal standoffs sticking through. It's a very well-constructed piece. And they actually snap and lock into position. And they do so in a way that uh, ensures it won't fall off. Remember, this has gotta survive shipping back to Pennsylvania. We don't want something that's rickety or preferably not even plastic clips. Uh, that can break. And <clears throat> this cover is simply going to go back into its position. Same place. Somebody was wondering if that wouldn't just go on top of that. No. No, because that's a good point. But what we end up doing is it won't seat down. Your, your motherboard is only so wide. You can't add to the width. Mm -hmm. You're going to run into some problems. So this is a replacement. I can tell you that right off the bat. Um, it never even occurred to me that it would go over it because you, you would be expanding and going too wide. That makes sense. Now this <clears throat> is slightly different in the way that it, the posts are a little different. These feel plasticky and the other ones are metal, which is weird. Wouldn't you think they just painted? Yeah, that it would color? be the same thing, but it's, it's a whole not. different build. Yeah. And so we're going to just line up those posts with the mounting holes. And by the way, you don't have to do this right now. We could mount everything in the board and do this uh, as long as we don't have the video card in the way. You know, mm -hmm. we can put the RAM and the CPU in and everything else. Um, let's see if I can line that up with the... There's the mounting hole right there. And there's that one. And you just push it down and it should click. And then you want to do... the other side. Try to avoid touching any of the metal contacts on the back of the board. That's how you short things out. Sometimes you may have to struggle a little bit. Mm. This is not being cooperative at all. It's a very snug and precise fit. You see how much force I have to exert, and I'm not comfortable with yeah, exerting that's scary. that much force. And especially in this corner, this feels a little fragile. So it's critical you make sure that that is lined up properly before you put that force down to snap it into position. And we're going to look at the bottom of the board and see if all of these little red posts are coming through. See, that one's not all the way through. How can you tell it's not all the way through? Well, look oh. at the other ones. Oh, like that one is short too, huh? How about okay. now? That's better. Thank you for noticing. Do you see any others? Um, they is all there look not even one down here? I don't see one over here at all. I would expect to see one there. But maybe there isn't one? Mm-mm. Did you see one? No, there isn't one. Let me bring this up to the folks. We'll show them what it looks like now. Aha, starting to come together, right? And like that little cover right here. If I can get it on the package. 
Now, I wanted to take this away from you because I've never done it before. I'd much rather have you do this. And this? And is this, see this name piece? Adam? I'm sure Adam would prefer. Andrew. Andrew, I'm sorry. Andrew. See, there's two little clips right here. You see these? Mm-hmm. If you look on the board, right beside this heat sink where I'm pointing the metal, do you, do you see these two clips? And you see those two posts? Those two posts, guess where they go? In the two clips? Mm -hmm. How about that? And that's going to fit on. See the two posts? See mm -hmm. the two clips? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to line that up. We're just going to line that up. There we go. See how she's painted? Yeah, it's like a puzzle. <laughs> and so now that looks like that. It looks cool. Okay. Now we just have the one last piece, huh? This piece goes over this heat sink that covers our voltage regulator modules or VRMs. Mm -hmm. When people overclock, this is an area that gets really, really hot. Mm -hmm. And this has to come off in order to make room for us to plug into this eight pin power connector. So we're not gonna put this on just yet. I see. This old cover, I don't know why you'd want it, but we certainly have a place to put it. These little slot covers can go back into position. These little PCI slot covers. I cannot remember. Which way they came up off? I think it was this way. Somebody says this, that bread has been back in the oven a long time. I don't know if you caught in the beginning of the video, I said the cook time on this bread is forever. So we're working on it. <laughs> I think they're just <laughs> I know, kindly just reminding you kidding. in case you got too involved. I've got the timer on. We're going to hear it beep in another 10 minutes and 40 seconds. And then I'll pull the bread out and I'll use a toothpick to put in there and see if it's cooked or not. I don't know how this goes on. The last time I made this bread, it ended up cooking for a total of about an hour and a half. I don't remember. Okay, I think this one goes this way. That one feels right, yep. And then this one probably goes... Oh, I see, it goes right here. It's right up at the top. And then this piece can go here. And this piece can go here. See that? Bada bing, bada boom. A spot for everything and everything in a spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm said the Dalmatian. And we're going to... No. Ooh, you almost died on your own mess. <laughs> Won't be the first time. Won't be the last time. Watch for the obituary. Mm. Always important to keep your work area very, very clean. I don't care what your floor looks like. You could pick that mess up later. <clears throat> now, now we can prep the motherboard. Now we're ready to... In but that means installing the CPU and the RAM. I'm going to open all these RAM sockets up. You know why this side doesn't open? Why doesn't it open? Because there's a great big video card that's going to be here. Okay. And if you open those, it hit the video card, potentially. So it has to fit that way. Mm -hmm. So on many, not all motherboards, but on many, the side where the video card goes doesn't open so that it doesn't conflict and hit hmm. the video card. Interesting. See, unlike other build videos and other channels, I can tell you why. Why things are the way they are? They just go, they, they like, many of them like to ritualize it. Like if they said you had to wave chicken moans over your head and chant. That's the way it's that's done. That's what it's, yeah. Because, because that's what without it's doing done. it, it doesn't work. And that's been their experience. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they become superstitious. I think it's bad luck to be superstitious. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I had to go there. Sorry. I will apologize on behalf of my brother. Well, you better get used to that a lot. Now, combined with a limited edition motherboard cover and a limited edition case, remember there's 2,000 of these cases. They're sold. They're gone. 400 of these covers. Well, you just got a, a nice donation. Oh, uh, it's not as nice as it looks. It's generous. That's 100 Swedish krona, which I think is about 10 US dollars. But very thank nice. you. It's very nice. Yes. But when we see 100, we think it's 100 US dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't to say 
We don't appreciate. Of course, we appreciate your contribution. Thank you so much. And that's from uh, our, our, our tech tips. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for noticing that, too, because I'm so into what I'm doing. This is a limited edition CPU. 20,000 of these are made. This is an Intel Core uh, 8086K. It's the 30th anniversary of the 8086 processor. Mm -hmm. This is the first consumer processor ever made by Intel to hit 5 gigahertz. Huh? It only hits it on one core, <laughs> but it hits it. But it darn does it. hit it, and I've never done that before. So it's it's uh, if you're into overclocking, basically this is just an 8700K that is has a good die. They call it the silicon lottery. So if you're an overclocker, it's worth paying extra for this because you could get more out of this. Now let me let me interrupt you and ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You said it's the first processor made by Intel to hit consumer. Five. Okay. It's are not there a any server other processor. companies that are consumer, made for consumers that have done it? Well, there's only one other processor company for consumer-based processors, and that would be AMD. AMD, but what about Apple? Um, Apple uses company. Intel chips. Oh, do they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. They okay. used a Motorola for a while, and then they moved to Intel. So they give you the certificate of authenticity, and they make a big deal that you bought something special. There's a price premium on this over the 8700K, even though, as I mentioned, this is basically a binned 8700K that has proven itself to be very flexible in overclocking. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're an overclocker, you can gamble by buying an 8700K and hope for the best, or you can spend a little extra and know you've got one that's very friendly, overclocking friendly. Mm -hmm. That being said, even if you don't overclock it, it is the fastest chip you can buy today out of the box. No heat sink is included. You'll have to provide your own. So if all you're interested in is the fastest processor, and you don't want to play with overclocking, you don't want to mess with your reliability or your warranties, you it still makes sense to buy this. Now, we're basically building a limited edition computer case with a limited edition cover for the motherboard. This cover is designed specifically for this motherboard. As far as I know, you can't use it on any other motherboard. Oh, so wow. you have to use this motherboard if you want this cover. With the cover being limited edition, the case being limited edition, and the processor being limited edition, it should be interesting to see how they, how it plays out in value if it depreciates the same over time as anything else. Now, I'm going to do this part as well because it's a little delicate. I always hold the parts by the edges. You see that little gold arrow? Mm -hmm. Triangle? Match it with the triangle on the board. When we lift this cover up, we're going to leave that little plastic cover on. It's going to pop off all by itself. You see the gold triangle? Mm -hmm. gonna, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I can't operate the camera and show you, but you've seen this a million times before in my other videos. We gently let that into the socket, just let it go down. All the pins are in that socket, that's why it's covered. They're very, very delicate and easily damaged. You see that little fork right there? Mm -hmm. That's gonna go in, that's, the only reason that screw is there is to hold this down. That has to have a certain amount of Newton meters of pressure to make the contacts that the engineer specify. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they just slapped it all together one day. People, I think people oversimplify the design and the engineering that go into this stuff. There's gonna be a lot of tension now on this lever and when I push it down, watch that little plastic cover pop up. Oh, that's cool. Now, if we ever have to take that chip out, like for example, let's say this motherboard needs to go to RMA, mm -hmm. you must put this cover on if you take that chip out. Those, you look at those sideways and they'll bend. <laughs> they will bend. I might have already bent one. So that's how delicate they are. And it's, Somebody is saying your mic is gone. Carrie's mic goes in and out. Um, mic shows it's on. Do you want to trade mics? Is it more important for you to be heard than it is for me? Just because one person said it? No, more than one. Okay. Um, have you tried turning it off and back on again? <laughs> I hear that might be something nice to try. It sounds crazy to me. I've never heard anybody think that rebooting. I might be on a channel that's a bit noisy, so I've turned it off. Can everybody hear me okay? Here, speak now. Can is everybody hearing me okay? Okay, you're you're see the volume okay. line is moving. Yeah. And if I mute you. Check one, two, now the line moves. So I'm gonna unmute you. Everything on our side seems to be working perfectly fine. Okay, audio is good. Okay, now, what, how much time we get on that bread? We have two minutes, 39 seconds. Okay. I can check it now. Check it. All right.
We got a couple of 970 Evos. Uh, sorry, we have one 970 Evo and an 860 Evo that we're going to install. Oh my. I'm going to give it a toothpick test. Toothpicks are right over there. Right over where? I'm sorry. Oh, I covered them. Thank you. Excuse me. This is an 860. They know I pulled that food out of the Oh, oven. they know. And this is the 970. The 860 is a regular SATA. Oh, that's a two and a half, that's a two and a half inch based SSD. Still too moist in there, so I'm gonna do it for another 15 minutes. I'm gonna remove this cover. Usually your top slot, the one nearest the CPU, is going to be your fastest M2 slot. Always check your motherboard manual to confirm that. I'm going to go on faith. This is not working like it should. There's a heat sink that's built onto the back of this. And so if you try and lift it up from the wrong side, it starts to peel apart. This, there's a sticky tape that holds the, the heat sink part of it. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. It's completely blocked. So apparently I'm not using this one. I have to use this one up here. My bad. So we're going to put that back. And we're going this side. There we go. So that's the slot I need right up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and install the M2. It's very quick, very simple, very expensive, but, but quick and simple. This is a 970 Evo. This sells for about $380, this one little part. Wow. That CPU is $460. The price went up on it. It was $425, now it's $462. This is uh, $400, so just those two parts are $800. The case is $300. Motherboard covers 50, motherboard's about 280. It's just the parts. There's no graphics wow. card on this build. The gentleman who I'm shipping it to says there's no point in risking any damage. That's the part that's heaviest and most likely to cause a problem in shipping. So we're gonna do all our testing and software install using the built-in video on the CPU for that purpose. And that's why you won't see a CPU on the parts list. I mean, a uh, GPU. Uh, GPU. GPU. We use so many analogies. It's so easy to get sort of this word salad happening with mm -hmm. So I'm just removing that. Very important to use a magnetic-based screwdriver. It doesn't hurt anything. We used to never use magnetic-based screwdrivers because the media floppy disks yeah, were magnetically with, based. Yeah. So you could erase a floppy disk if you got too close to it. I actually worked with a girl who had some weird powers. And uh, we used, um, I'm going to date myself or age myself once again, but we used a lot of the five and a quarter drives at work. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes she would, just by holding the drive, the contents of it would just, or the, the disc. She had a magnetic personality. Yeah, she would erase. We could not let her hold five and a quarter floppies. We would insert them into her computer for her and remove them for her. Wow. Lest our data be... Erased. Corrupted. It normally didn't erase it. What I did is it corrupted it. It scrambled. Well, it would not appear. It would right. be like I handed her a blank disc. Mm -hmm. That would be corruption. <laughs> that screwdriver is just a little too big. Let's try this one. Ah! This is a little delicate but it's not like rocket science. It's important the screw gets started straight or it won't go in straight and then it goes crooked and cross threads. And then I can use the bigger screwdriver which will have a little better bite to it. And that installs one terabyte of storage. Wow. Right there. And as far as this goes, 
Check this out. Come around. Now, me personally, I like to hide this. And you can put it right there. And the way that we're going to do this is there's four little holes here on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And if you take one of these out, your job See how that fit on there like a mm -hmm. picture frame? Mm -hmm. And the question is, do we want it facing this way or do we want it facing this way? I think that way is going to look better. Put the screws in. In fact, you have to put it in. See how there's a cutout right here with the connectors on the back of this? Well, it's, it's not on the back of this. It's actually on the drive. You see how that comes down and it stays clear of that? Mm-hmm. So you can have room for your connectors. So we're going to get some screws from one of these bags. We want a really fine threaded screw here. No, 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 no. And these are just a, a fine threaded short screw. And we just start the screws. And we don't tighten them. Just get them started. Okay. Okay. You're going to need four of those. What's the point in a 250 gig SATA SSD with a one terabyte NVMe? The owner of the computer wants to use that SSD as a recovery drive. Okay. Makes sense. I also think he had it laying around. He's just looking for an excuse to mm -hmm. use it. That's just between you and me, but it's all good. I got the screws started. Now that they're all started, go ahead and make them flush. You don't have to over tighten them, but they should just turn them until they stop turning and that's good enough. All right. Carrie, do you magnetize your own screwdrivers? Yes. I, even when you buy a screwdriver that's pre-magnetized. I thought you had them done by Hawking. Stephen Hawking? Yeah. I don't know how now you're going to get that's, that done uh, now. That's degaussing. by the hawk himself. My screwdrivers are getting a little weak, so I've been meaning to do this for a while. But on Amazon or pretty much, you know, lots of places, it's not uncommon, hardware stores sell a little device that looks like this. And this is a screwdriver magnetizer and demagnetizer. So you can not only magnetize, but also Should demagnetize. I yeah, go right ahead. And so if I were to rub the screwdriver on the outside of this, it demagnetizes it. And when I put the screwdriver in here, then by, by rubbing this through here, this magnetizes the screwdriver. And there's a lot of very immature people that are going to make their jokes. I was going to, yeah. but you know, I guess I won't now. And this is how it works. This is a real tool and you can take any screwdriver and you can magnetize it. You can take an old hard drive. Inside of a hard drive is a rare earth magnet. It's very powerful. They're really good magnets. And you can rub a screwdriver closed. against it. So people are like, you, can, you shouldn't keep magnets around your data. Like, well, have you ever opened up a hard drive? Yeah. Obviously not, or you wouldn't be sounding like such a fool. And this can be done with any metal screwdriver, whether it's magnetized or not. And the magnetism does wear out. You know, it'll get weaker. And so you have to do this to charge them up from time to time. This is a $3 or $5 tool, and you can't wear is it, it out. Is it just a plain old magnet, nothing special? Mm, more or less. It's just designed in such a way that... Like, could you rub a refrigerator magnet against mm -hmm. a screwdriver and make it... You could just leave the refrigerator magnet attached to it the whole time, and then the magnetism will never wear out. Hmm. Yeah, sure. This is designed <clears throat> so it can demagnetize as well. Hmm. So you've got the, uh, the positives and the negatives opposing each other, and it's held together. And it's designed, and the more, you, the more you do this, the stronger it gets to a certain point. At which point, it's just a waste of time. It's just entertainment at that point. Now you're just on vacation. You could put your Me Too joke right in there. Somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is a very important tool for a technician. And um, after you get all your little giggles out and out of the way, you can get some work done. That's how you do that. And after so that, giggly. after that, we've got 
RAM to install. How often do you magnetize your screwdriver? When it feels weak, I magnetize it. There's no rule other than that. All right. When do you eat? When I'm hungry. When you're hungry. So I've got the drive on. Do I put a screw in? Is Yeah, that one thumb. Out? Yep, I got it. Would you put that back in for me? Sure. Andrew likes his RGB, and he's set for RAM. This is uh, 32 gigs of Trident Z RGB memory. 32 gigs. That's a lot. It's heavy. Feel how heavy that is. Substantial. Jimmy thinks so. All right, you want to install this memory for me? Yeah, hang on. I'm wondering if I hung this weird. It feels um, feels like it wiggles and the other one doesn't wiggle. So I just want to make... No, you're not in on the bottom. You're not so. flush. See how it still wiggles? I guess that wiggles. Mm -hmm. It's in. All right. I'm going to start installing this RAM because I'm not going to wait for you. I'm because here. we've got four sticks of RAM, we don't have to worry about what slots to use. So we're going to fill them all. It's huge. Yeah, because it's RGB, you, they also this is made by G-Skill. And if you put this on your computer, it'll go faster. Of course. Yeah, those are go faster stickers. Yeah. It's like painting stripes on your car. Painting flames. Oh, it's flames, not stripes? Not stripes. Any, anything like that that makes it go faster. Yeah. And since there's two sets of RAM, there's... Two sets of stickers. Yeah. So always make sure you're facing the right direction. Slide it into the track. Right? It's not in the track. It should go in very easily. And I'll use my thumbs. You know who's got two thumbs? This guy. This guy. One side, then the other side. You should hear a positive clicking or feedback. And I'm just going to take care of this because I'm right here and I'm just going to do it. And then, once again, make sure it's in the track before you exert any force. Make sure that the keyhole that's in the slot of the RAM Imagine. lines up with the slot in the socket on the motherboard. So that way it only fits in one direction. Thumbs, pressure, one side, other side. That installs 32 gigs of RAM. Done. Storage is done. CPU is installed. Motherboard is now ready to be installed into the case. Perfect. Very simple stuff. You're going to lay that flat, right? Yes, we're going to lay the case flat. You want to go ahead and just put that out in yep. just some anywhere out there. Get it out. I'm going to put this motherboard cover back on over the uh, M.2 drive here. And I did it wrong. It's got a little catch that goes in first, right underneath the motherboard cover. And then it should line up. Why is it not lining up? It should go in right like this. There we go. Now it's on. And that is what the completed motherboard prep looks like for right now. We will add this cover after we get the 8-pin power connector, after we get all that. But first, we have to mount this into the case. And to do so, we want to lay the case flat. We want to work with gravity and not against it. it makes life a lot easier. So we're going to lay that flat like so. And uh, I'm going to grab the board here and I'm going to try and grab it by its edges. I really don't want to ground anything out. And I'm just going to, I see nine mounting holes, three across the top, three across the bottom and three across the middle. And the standoffs are already pre-installed in this case, so we don't need to move anything. Mm -hmm. The center standoff is, is not something you screw down, it's a post. And it's designed to hold the motherboard in position for you mm -hmm. while you get your screws lined up. So my main concern at this point is to make sure that the motherboard fits in correctly. 
that the I.O. shield here is going to line up mm -hmm. with the, or sorry, the I.O. ports are going to line up with the I.O. shield. I'm not sure if we're picking that up on the camera. And I want to try and, it's hard to pick this motherboard up properly with the cover. So try and pick the motherboard up by heat sinks or by edges. Try to avoid touching the bottom of the board. And you typically have to tilt the board forward. Make sure that all these ports are lined up. And then you should be able to push it forward until that metal post comes through the center hole. Can you see it? Well, How with the motherboard know? cover, you'd have to get a little flashlight. I can feel it. Oh, I can okay. feel that it went in. Okay. But I'm questioning whether or not that's really lined up as best it could be because it looks offset. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Huh? Yeah, these aren't coming through the holes quite right. So you have to push it forward more. Well, it almost looks like it's got to go down. Yeah, that's better. But now it looks like it went too far down. Let's see if I can lift it up a little. This is hard to do. Again, the motherboard cover adds a little complexity to an otherwise relatively simple build. Most builds are simple. I just want to make sure these I.O. ports... Yeah, that feels right to me. And then if you look through the motherboard holes, particularly these on top, you should be able to see through to the standoff down below. That's the center post right down there if you look down in there. I'm sorry guys, I can't give you a, an angle of this. We need a third person here with a camera is what we need. But <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start tightening this down if you want to check on. I'm going to check the bread. And I'm going to find the coarse thread screws here that are for mounting our board. These are called uh, 6 by 32 and those I believe should be the ones we need for the motherboard. There's, please use the right screws ladies and gentlemen, that's all I can say. I'm going to have a little difficulty, I think, reaching through because the motherboard cover, I have to have a longer, skinnier bit. So I'm going to pull out the old electric driver, which has a six inch long, skinny bit, which probably could be magnetized too. It's getting a little weak. And I'm just going to start right up here. Probably going to regret tightening these down. Probably going to have to come back and untighten them. But I'm feeling, I'm feeling faith, feeling like it's all going to line up perfectly because it's an NZXT motherboard with an NZXT case, and I suspect it's going to fit like a glove. I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> the screwdriver has an auto off clutch. It's set to a number three setting, and it ensures that I won't turn the screws too far, but it does require a little bit of pressure so that the screwdriver doesn't, the head of the screwdriver doesn't slip on the head of the screw. I feel like this bread is just about done, Yeah. but I'm a little skeptical, even though the toothpick is coming out clean, it's still... Well, I mean, there's no health hazard to eating raw bread, right? It's just that right. it's going to be mushy and you don't want it mushy. Right, it's going to be a little stodgy. But if you overcook it, then it's going to be what, really dry or what's the fear here? Um, yeah, it's a little bit comes out dry. It should be like the But it's still cooking now, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to continue to cook as it cools. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about sugar-free um, sugar replacements is that as they as the crystal cools, it hardens back up. So as soft as this is now, as it cools off, the sugars are going to harden in it, and it will become a much harder, almost like a, a cookie outside. So I'm really, I think I'm just going to let it be done then. I'll let it be done. So we're going to turn the oven off? I'll turn the oven off. You see the clear off? You know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to change my mind because I don't know your oven. It makes me nervous. I think I'm going to give it 10 more minutes. I 10 think more I'll minutes feel in better. the oven? Yep. You're the boss. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Jimmy. Boy, you gotta move. I Come on. You wanna be in the oven. Good boy. There you go. We don't serve dog here. Yes, we do. We serve dogs, we don't serve dogs. Well, if they don't behave. <laughs> Motherboard manual. 
bridging connector for SLI. This is an LED strip. Oh, good one came with an LED strip. So we'll give it 10 minutes and then it's going to come out to cool. Oh, that's cool. Look at this. These are LED strips. And you can like uh, place them. I don't know. They're magnetized. You can do stuff like that and add LEDs. I don't know. Where should I put this one? Maybe like that. That's cool. I don't know. I'd like to have it out of the view of the window. Hmm. I wonder where other people put them. You could just go on each side. Maybe that's the way to go. I don't know. No idea. Andrew may have some thoughts on this. Mm. Something like that, maybe? That just adds more RGB lighting to your case. It's going to hook up to the board and it's controlled through software so you can synchronize and color coordinate all of that. There's a couple of connectors here for power and this is all related uh, strictly for RGB, it does absolutely nothing for the performance of the computer. Oh, silica gel. Oh, at least have some ketchup on it or something. It says throw away. It doesn't say how far. I don't even know where that went. You You're going to find it in 15 that. years. Yeah. Some archaeologists are going to find the... Clearly, this isn't food. The Cicadas auroras. But this civilization was so savage that they had to be printed on it that it wasn't food. <laughs> and that's what they're going to think of us, and it'll be your fault. Yeah, I do have some moments where I'm proud. Because then they're going to pull up this footage of you eating it. <laughs> and then they'll try it. Hmm, <laughs> tasty. Okay, are there any questions in the chat? that I can address right now. We've got to do the liquid cooler. He was a little concerned that the Kraken X62 wasn't going to fit. I think it's going to fit just fine. He was afraid it might interfere with his RAM. I, I like the name. Kraken? Yeah. Release the Kraken! Release it! So he sent a Kraken X62 and a Corsair H115i. Do you think a Corsair H115i will fit better in an NZXT case? Or do you think an NZXT Kraken will fit better in Probably an NZXT case? Probably the NZXT. The one thing with sticking with one manufacturer is you usually eliminate fitment problems. Yep. With the keyword being usually. Did you say fitment or Fitbit? Fitment. I heard Fitbit. You don't want Fitbit problems. No. My Fitbit had a fit. <laughs> For a bit. All right. Dr. Seuss is quit. done. All right. See what I did there? Never mind. I worry about dogs eating the gel pack. My dogs aren't that stupid, but thank mm. you for worrying. <laughs> if I soaked it in chicken broth, maybe. My dogs have no interest in eating something that doesn't taste good. One million gigawatts of power. Now this is the Kraken X62, but we don't want to use these fans because these are crappy. Every all-in-one cooler comes with crappy fans. So if noise is a concern, open the wallet and get yourself a couple of Noctua fans. They're not going to match color, but they're going to be silent and they're going to run a long, long time. Go ahead and open that up. Check it out. No, no, open that up. Take oh. it off. Put it on top of that one. Please. Please and thank you. Mm -hmm. No hiding behind the tower. I'm not trying to hide behind it. It's just taller than me. It's, it runs in the family. <laughs> Nothing else in this box. And I'll just put these two things back together. I think it's going to fit just fine, but if it doesn't, we've got the H159. That is awfully sizable, isn't it? Hmm. 
Now I'm second guessing myself. Should I put this with the rest of the pile? Yes, please. In the living room. Oh. And take this with you. And that one. Anything else? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't curse Servant. you on my way out. Uh, it looks just like a car radiator, doesn't it? It does look like a radiator. It's because it is a radiator. When silica gel a day keeps the doctor away. Look. I'm Jordy LaForge. You will never be as cool as Jordy LaForge. No, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I just want to see if this is going to fit. Come here, let me show you. Before I put this in place, this is going to go up here like this, right? We're going to get to that in a minute. But before I do that, is this going to fit without hitting the ram? That's the question everybody needs to know. Ooh, it looks like it's it. It's good. Yeah. Plenty of room. Plenty of room. Was it NZXT didn't let you down? What does NZXT stand for? Any? Mm. Don't you know how to use Google? you young people. I would, but you won't let me have my phone on the camera. <laughs> okay, I think this front cover comes off first, if memory serves. I thought it had a little... Oh. Oh, geez. Yeah, that does come off. And with that off, now we can remove this one, I think. Is that a screw? Yep. Phillips. I don't recall them putting a screw there before. Hmm. Hmm. That's unusual. I don't know if that screw has to come out or not. I really don't know. My other H, my 700i doesn't. Seems like a very awkward place for a screw to go. Do you see one on the other side? No. Nope. Hmm. It's lifting here. I'll tell you what I have found to be useful in my past experience is to set it on the floor. Lift up on it. <clears throat> I think it comes off. I think it comes off. Are they telling me I'm doing it wrong in the chat room? Let's see. The name NZXT is a correction of the word next in uppercase. Interesting. Gary hasn't had a Coke for a long time. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm not seeing anything yet. Let me see. He's a bigger hammer. That's for sure. Push it back to front and it will undo. Shouldn't be back to front. It's flush against the back. You never go up. back to front. Just pull it up from the front. Here it goes. I just built the system last week. Ah, so that screw did not have to come out. It did not have to come out. Okay. Thank you, guys. Heavy. Getting heavy. So, yeah, this just comes up right here. Like so. These are plastic tabs, so you want to be careful not to break them. Just want to lift it off equally across like this. Okay, very good. And that screw I took out, that's for the um, front panel, which stays in. Yeah, I didn't think that had to come out. I was confused. Now, 
You see this up here? This is going to hold the radiator. Look how easy they made this to install. So what we have to think about right now is if we put this radiator in, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to sit up here. And do we want the fans on top blowing air in or do we want the fans on bottom pushing oh, wow. air out? Me personally, I like the fans on the bottom blowing air through. Sometimes the case manufacturer makes it impossible for you to to pick any other way. Excuse me? Yeah, go right ahead. I've turned the oven off. Thank you. And I'm just going to let it cool here. Give it one last toothpick test. It's making me hungry. You know, we haven't eaten since this whole thing started, nor did we eat an hour before we started. I haven't eaten yet today. Welcome to live video. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. You don't get to eat. Of something else keto is good for. Starving? I'm not starving because I'm keto. So these four thumb screws that I'm removing, this is what I like about this NZXT design. It allows me to pull the whole frame out and I can go ahead and mount the radiator oh, the frame really nice. outside of the case rather than work within the confines and restrictions of the case. And this will hold the radiator much, much larger. It'll accommodate, uh, this is a 240 millimeter which is basically two 120 millimeter fans side by side. 120 and 120 is 240. And what do you think if we added an extra Nobody fan? Nobody told me there'd be math. If we added an extra fan, what would the radiator size be? 120 times 3? You lost me. What? If 120, we added a third fan? If there was a radiator that was a fan longer, oh, one I fan, see. two fans, three fans. 120 and 120 right. is? 240. Adding another fan? 360. So there's 240 millimeter radiators, there's 360 degree radiators. Cases that will fit a 360 will also typically fit a 240, but not the other way around. All right. And uh, they cost more money. Now, <clears throat> when I put this in, we got to remember the way we took it out. So if I put this in this way and it goes back in, I've just installed it upside down. Mm -hmm. Then go on that side. Looks like it does though, doesn't it? Yeah, I so, would do it that so way. So that's why when you take it out of the case, that's the disadvantage is you have to now keep in mind the orientation of the way this goes back in. So this is going to go in like this, right? You see the way that, that's the top. Mm -hmm. And if we want the radiator on the top, we can do that, but we have to turn it around so the pipes come out. The pipes, the pipes are calling like this. Capiche? Capiche. I just I went from Italian to, to Irish. Well, I think we can all agree that was neither Italian nor nor Irish. And then, and then, I'm just going to ignore you. And then, <laughs> we can mount the fans here on the bottom. Oh, those are, these are one, what size are those fans? Those 120s or 140s? I moved the The right size, whatever they are, just give them. Okay. Now on every fan ever built, whether it's a ceiling, um, it's a box fan that you have by your bed, you have one side that has a frame. See the frame? Mm -hmm. You have a side that doesn't have a frame. Mm -hmm. The side that doesn't have the frame is the side that sucks air in. The side that does have the frame. On every fan ever built. I thought it was all the, about the direction that it spins. The direction that it spins will be determined on how it was mounted oh, into yeah, the frame. That makes sense. Right? Mm -hmm. I suppose there's nothing against putting a switch in to reverse the fan direction. I've just never seen that before. And so... Sorry, so I'm laughing. Somebody just said I'm like Wilson because you can only see me from... Uh, <laughs> so nice. So when I'm going to mount these fans and I look here at where they're going to go, I want to suck air in from inside of the case and blow it out through the top. 
Right. Now this top is solid, but you see there's holes all along the edges? Yep. That's all it needs. And I got to think about where my cable's going to come down for the power for these fans. So ideally, when I put this back in, remember this is the top back corner, mm -hmm. so I want the cable this direction. And I think of all the directions I got to think about. I got to think about the direction of the airflow. I got to think about where the cable's coming out, where the top of this frame is, and where this is going to align within this um, I don't even know what you call this. This this is basically a frame itself, top frame that goes in here. And I like to have both power connectors facing each other. So if one fan goes here, then the other fan would equally go the same direction. Right? So both mm -hmm. power connectors, just to keep our cable management as clean as possible, like so. And I think that's right. You see how it entirely covers that radiator? Mm-hmm. Looks good. And you'll see the fan, the cables, Noctua gives us are very short, and we have extension cables. Mm -hmm. And look. That's uh, great. I thought there was Go Faster stickers. It's just a sticker on the cable. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to use any of that for right now. We'll come to that later. There's also another, you've got another cable there. There's two, or sorry, there's three cables these come with. There's a fan splitter, a fan quieter, yeah, it's, it reduces. A silencer? And then a, um, a how, fan extension. How does, the, how does a cable quiet the fan? It reduces the amount of voltage going to the fan. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Although with a modern motherboard, you so should you're be buying able. a big, huge fan, and then you're like, eh, you okay, don't need that bigger, much Okay, bigger fan needs to rotate slower to move air, the equivalent of a smaller fan. Oh? Smaller fan has to work harder and as such is noisier. To move the equivalent amount of air with a larger fan, it doesn't have to turn as fast, therefore it's not as noisy. I would not have thought that. So it if you that plug way. that directly into a 12 volt power, like right into your power supply, boom, it's full speed all the time. There's no reason for that in 2018. Your motherboard should be able to speed the fans up when it gets warm and slow the fans down when it gets cooler. Larger fans spin slower and are naturally less noisy. That's a good lesson. Right? So that's so what that's we do differently here on our channel and other channels. And we understand why we do these things. We don't just ritualize it. I right. hate, hate, hate ritualizing. Okay. Bracket. Everybody says it's a bracket. Thank you. My vocabulary is becoming limited. My brain is being filled with too much information. That was a lot of information about the size of fans. It was just about fans. Yeah. Yeah. Told you I had fans. <laughs> big okay. ones, big fans. Ooh, did we show this to the audience? Not yet. It's very hot. I was gonna let it cool for 15 minutes, and then once it's cooled off a bit, we're going to dump it out of the pan and look at all the beautiful pumpkins. This is a time like we really need smell a vision. It does actually smell good. Why do I sound surprised at that? Why are you surprised? Because you're so picky. I'm passionate and precise. <laughs> I don't remember putting raisins in. No. Oh. <laughs> Why is this so salty? <laughs> it's got more carry in it than I planned. <laughs> Plan to have you know as little carry in there as possible. Carry diet. You don't need to add more carry. <laughs> Would you ever have one fan sucking and the other fan blowing? Well, that's called a push and pull configuration, not sucking and blowing. Push and pull. It's pushing it. air. Like we could mount fans on each side and sandwich the radiator between fans. And one, that, but they all move air in the same direction, always in the same. So one fan on the back is pushing air. And one fan on the front is pulling air. Mm -hmm. Push and pull. Not suck and blow? Not <laughs> suck and blow. These are, <laughs> if you want to be a technician, you're probably better off getting your vocabulary correct before you engage with a customer in a professional atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Just a tip from me to you. Work for space balls. Yeah. And so did the <laughs> password one, two, three, four. Right. Hey, Kanye's got all zeros, so. Yeah, I have six of them, six zeros. But you know what? Like, if you knew that you were going to access your phone on camera, wouldn't you change your passcode lest it be revealed? 
to the world? If you were a technical person, perhaps. Like I would. I'm not sure many musicians are technical people. They're more artistic. Although I would think he would have the latest and greatest phone, which would just do facial recognition or a fingerprint. So, I don't know. So Zoom says, I will now call it not suck and blow. Not suck and blow. Perfect. Glad I'm getting through to people. That's right. You're making a difference one person at a time. I like Bing Wilson. The bread has great. virtual calories. No, the bread is full of calories. It you know, just has no sugar. This is what I don't like about virtual reality. If you're thirsty and you drink a virtual glass of water, are you still thirsty? <laughs> yep. Pretty sure you are. Hashtag not suck and blow. <laughs> it's trending. <laughs> also not back to front. What? What? I need a Coke. Yep. With something in it, like Percocet. <laughs> no, 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 we don't do drugs here. Uh, where is my Percocet? I mean, my Coke. Where is my... You know what? Maybe I'm just going to have the best water in the world. Why aren't I getting any money for this? I don't know. This really is the best water. It, 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 is. it is. It is. Let me just get the silica gel out of it. Mm. Hi, Stacy. I spy with my little eye. I don't know what she's looking at. Apparently her little eye. <laughs> Maybe it's my, a mirror. My little eye, because that's all that can be seen. Okay, so somewhere in the, contain in, the, in the box that came with the radiator and the cooler are some very long screws and then we're going to need those to mount these fans the fans did not come with these screws because the fans were not intended to be used other than for a case so they just come with standard case screws now these parts i want to kind of separate out away from everything else because we're going to have some extra parts left over and if he were to switch his cpu to a x99 x299 or am4 socket um, that's what the extra screws are going to be for along with adding additional fans there's enough for all of that I guess this is going to be my job, huh? <clears throat> it is. Let me get some scissors so I can get this bag open. And what you're going to do, I'm just going to make a mess right here. Now you'll see there are these little short screws. Mm -hmm. And that would be if we wanted to just mount the radiator to a frame. But since the fans are going to mount through the frame, we don't have to mount the radiator to the frame. It'll happen... Through the fan. Yeah, the fan will do two jobs. Why did you just... Well, this can be slid along this path. You're going to take one of these long screws and one of these washers, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to simply line up opposite corners. So one corner right here. Mm -hmm. And then one over here. Exactly. And then the yeah. other two should automatically happen for you. Now, it is critical that you do not over tighten this. Okay. This radiator is made of a very soft material, and it's very easy to cross-thread these screws. You don't want to cross the threads. No, because then you'll, it'll never tighten. It'll just spin and spin forever. And then it, if it doesn't tighten, how does it secure in shipping? How can you be sure it's not going to break free? And right. in, in the case of the radiator breaking free, it'll just bounce around up here. But in case of the fans breaking free, they'll bounce around all inside of the case throughout the shipping process. And that would be bad, okay? Okay, well, I made a Ghostbusters reference that you didn't quite pick up on. What so did you I'm say? I'm just going to have to keep making Ghostbusters references until you get one. The classic Ghostbusters or the female remake? The classic one. They said don't cross the threads. Don't cross the streams. Right. That's a different thing. It's meant to be picked up on. No. It's subtle. You're My right? humor is subtle. That's not humor. <laughs> I thought it was funny. And if anybody knows what, what humor is not, it's me. It's you. Give me my Fiji. The Bula Spirit. The Bula Spirit. The who spirit? The Bula Spirit. Who's Bula? Bula? Yeah. The Bula Spirit is what Fijians are taught to express to visitors to the island. Because they make all their money in tourism. So you must express the Bula Spirit. I see. The fans look terrible color, but they are the best. Mm -hmm. 
I've had that said about me. <laughs> Except for the best part. So you want me to do all, should I tighten these down or no. should I then move on to the next fan? Just move on to the, well, it actually really doesn't matter. Okay. Do whatever you want. Those fans should be bumped up against each other. Why are they not? Why is there a space? I don't, I don't know. Where's the mounting holes? Mounting holes over here. Oh, I see. There you go. There you go. Jay Carr says, oh, so you know Linda in real life. At Stacy. Nice. Pickle Rick is humor. Morty, you, you, you got to put those fans on the, you know, the right, right in the right direction, Morty. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, Morty. Morty, are you listening to me? Oh, am I Morty? Oh, jeez. Okay, that's all I got. Morty, how do you, how do you not know if you're Morty? Am I in C-137? It was those Crabopulous guy, wasn't it? Michael? Crabopulous Michael. It Crabopulous Michael's at it again. Nice try. You're an insect. Not you, Morty. What's the name of the video game? The vir virtual... The game that they're playing? I know. Oh. Uh, was it Ralph or Rick? No, it was... Uh, it yeah, it was a carpet Blitz salesman. Blitz and Schlitz. Everybody thinks I'm married to my sister. What is wrong with people? 694 people are watching. Oh, just dropped to 691. Apparently I just offended three people. That's it? Only three? I know. It's weird, right? Not as easy to offend people as it used to be. Actually. That's the opposite of what you say. Yeah. Said no carry ever. Not many girls I know of are interested in tech. Really? They don't have cell phones? Hmm. Weird. Hmm. This one... The fate of the galaxy relies... Morty, Morty, the, the fate of the galaxy relies on those fans being space, space property, Morty. Why is this one not lining up right? Because you tightened the other ones down. You didn't have it in there like I suggested I, before I you tightened. I thought I had. No, no. I didn't, I didn't ask you to think. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I got. Okay. Don't unscrew them too much. First, I'm screwing them too much. Now it's and I have salt that's enough. too salty. You do have salt that's mm -hmm. too it's salty. True. The game is called Roy. That's it, Roy. Thank you for that. That came from uh, Jay Santos in the chat room. That's better. Your sister should be a cameraman for you. Uh, well, the problem is that she lives clear on the other side of town, and there's a plenty of administrative work that she could be doing from creating thumbnail images, uh, video descriptions, video editing. We, she could take, I don't know, out of my live blogs where I answer questions, she could be separating those questions out. For example, when I separated out the install of the 1809 from the live blog, the live blog got about 7,000 views. But when I took out of the live blog, me personally, I extracted out just the install of 1809, titled it as installing 1809 live in real time, that video has 26,000 views, even though it's the same video from the live build. So it shows that people aren't gonna sit through three and a half hours to find the 20 minutes they're interested in. And it just takes somebody else to do that so I can continue to create new content while somebody else extracts and refines and distills out of the three and a half hours. If there's a good 20 minutes, maybe, good 10 minutes, just pull those out, upload them separately, title and thumbnail them. All right. Very good. Now this whole piece is going to, well, first let me just double check your work. I've been watching you. Everything's been good so far. Let me just check the tension. Very good. Very good. You did notice, right, that the, the, the rubber started to sink in when you tightened too far? Did you notice that? I didn't feel it. You can see it. This rubber here just starts to concave. As you, it'll just keep letting you tightening and tightening. It'll just bend down. And it's there for anti-vibration purposes. So if you tighten it, see how that side's coming up? Mm hmm As I tightened it down a little bit because I just felt so like... So you want it to? Well, that's how I know I've taken it right to its limit. Okay. And I just want to take it right to that limit. 
Now all I have to do is flip this upside down and around this way, right? Because I want these pipes coming down this angle here, which for now I'll just put here. And then this is going to rest right back in place. Look how easy that is. And we can take these two power cables and we can run them out. You see this big hole cut in the back of the case? Mm -hmm. Just right out through there. You couldn't ask for installing a radiator any easier than that, honestly. And then when we put the bracket and everything else on, that's going to go on like so. And this is RGB. It's going to light up. Nice. These light up. The NZXT lights up. Video card will probably light up too, huh? And that's what it's going to look like. Yeah, I would imagine it probably will. They actually cut a hole right here in the shroud for the power supply cover. And that's to power the video card without having to run your cables, making them look ugly. They're trying their best to uh, keep that nice and clean. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's a nice little touch. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell from a case manufacturer who eats their own dog food. It's an industry expression for companies that actually use the products they manufacture. Because there could be a big discrepancy. And you go, gosh, you guys must have never built a case before or built within your cases. Otherwise, you wouldn't have allowed this design to happen. And NZXT really feels like they really build computers in their own cases. They Can you put those scissors back for me, please? Sure. Just want to get these out of the way before I knock them over. So this is for adding more fans. That's I thought, since we have all those screws left, I thought that meant we did a good job. Oh. Well, we used what we needed, and we left the rest. Am I not? No. Do me a favor. Would you hold this in a tilted position so I can see? I'm not tall enough. What a shock. One's going to go here. You got it? Mm -hmm. It's heavy. And the last one is going to go right about here, I think, is where this one goes. Why is it not tightening? What is going on here? Is it not in the right hole? Hmm. That one goes there. That should go there. Maybe I'm just one off. Mm. Maybe it's this one. Yeah. That. That's it. That looks good to me. This can go back on. We could save it for later, but if I put it on now, I don't have to worry about knocking it over. Damaging it later. Yeah. So if I have to remove it, I'll remove it, and then the front cover can go back on. You'll see we also have a filter here on the front of these three fans that's magnetized. Nice. See the little magnets on there on the bottom? And it sits in that little, see that little groove that sticks out? So it's important you take that off from time to time and clean it out. And this is just simply a friction fit. Make sure it's lined up before you exert any pressure onto it. Eh? Eh? Coming together, huh? Eh? Look at that. And then it's going to go on there like that. And then after we put the uh, power cable on, then that piece will go back like so. Huh? Looks good. Right? Am I right? Oh, jeez. So Carrie is going subscription only. No, that's not what I said. If anybody would like to explain it to him so I don't have to repeat myself. <laughs> or he could hit the rewind button on a live video, which mm -hmm. he could do at any time. Okay. Uh, what do we have going on here? 
The hmm. radiator is uh, someone saying you put the radiator on and then you cover it. It's not being covered. What do you, you think all these holes are? Holes. What do you think that's there for? Why, why do you think there's three fans behind this cover? You think those fans... Do you, do you think, honestly, that an engineer put all the money and effort and design and research into a case that can't breathe? Honestly, from a company as big as NZXT, what are you thinking? Why don't people stop and think for a minute? Maybe it's me. Maybe there's a part of this I need to slow down and think before I say something that's going to make me look like I'm not paying attention. Is that expecting too much from people? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, thank you. <laughs> At least you're honest. All right. Um, how's that bread coming along? Um, it is cooling. It should be ready to turn out like onto a plate. So. I have so much trash. I'm going to organize this. While you're doing that, I will turn this bread out onto a plate and we'll see what we got. Here come the dogs. Hold on, wait, don't do that yet. Okay. Why don't you bring that over here? Do it right here. Everybody can witness it live. This is real, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this, this is, is nerve wracking because if I didn't grease this good enough, it's not coming out. It's just gonna look like random breadcrumb. No, you can't really see it. You need to do it from an angle. Stand off to the side. No, you don't have to move closer. You just have to oh. move out of the way. You can't stand in front of it. Okay. Just kind of stand off to the side. Stand where I'm standing, maybe. Or, okay. or, that's I'll stand fine. where you're standing. Let's All see right. What it looks like I need it like a drum roll. <laughs> Big reveal. Ta -da! Ta -da! Oh. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> the three D. And you can see the pumpkin detail on the top the from whiffs. the awesome pan. Can you see the little The little heat steam. Waves. Yeah, it's still pretty warm, huh? I, I just wish I will you could tell you this. It. it smells good. <laughs> can I help you? Do you need some help? This is not yours. This is not dog food. This is people food. No, sitting doesn't do it. It's not, no. I'm not buying into your little puppy dog eyes. That might have worked at the pound, but I, I know <laughs> you now. It worked at the pound. Oh, it totally worked. I mean, he's here, isn't he? He's like tapping his feet like, hello, I'm waiting. This recipe came with a recipe for a ginger glaze that you can put over it. Look at, they're like synchronized heads. <laughs> You could also just put butter on it. It's delicious with just butter. I like to do a, like a cream cheese glaze and do that, but you have a lot of options. But the recipe that I'm posting is just gonna have the ginger glaze. Ginger glaze? Yeah. Ew, it doesn't sound good. I'm yeah, not a I don't of ginger. I don't like because something like this, like I'm going to our other brother's house for Thanksgiving and I don't want to show up empty handed. So I'll be bringing this exact cake with me. This exact one? Well, not this one. I'll make a new one. Oh. But the same recipe, I'll be bringing it with me so I'm not showing up empty handed. And I'm not going to put any glazes on it because I want people to choose. You realize you're oh. faceless. I was looking in the chat. I wasn't looking there. But um, I want people to be able to choose how they want to enjoy their food. I'm not going to tell them what to do. So I will bring the ginger glaze, the cream cheese glaze, and they can either do that or just put butter on it.
Bon Appetit. Irving says he's leaving. Hey, Irving, always great to see you. Oh, he said something in French. What does he say? <laughs> Linda, again, what does he say? Say that out loud. Um, I think it's been a good time, or it's been good seeing you, and bon appétit. Hmm. Thanks, Irving. Or have a good trip, or it's been a good trip. My, I've been to Paris twice, and my French is still subpar. <laughs> That is a thing of beauty, and now I'm really hungry. Mm. We could Lyle's slice into eyes it. were tearing me apart. <laughs> oh, oh, there goes Jimmy. Something exciting happening outside. Should we slice into it and, yeah, and make you taste it? I, I this could be I'll like the it. time you tried, tried cheesecake. No. You wild child, you. No, it's not going to be that traumatic. <laughs> Bread is bread's a pretty easy thing for me. All of these extra now, pieces. do you want to try it with just plain butter or the cream cheese glaze? No, no, no. Just without anything? I like everything plain. All right. I'm going to help just myself like my life. to some cream cheese glaze that I brought with me and put in your fridge somewhere. It is now gone into the void, I'm afraid. So. Okay. Now somebody spoke something in French there. I don't know what they're saying. Do I look French? He said, um, I can see that that looks like a delicious cake. It's not a cake. C'est pas. <laughs> it's bread. But thank you. Merci. I never had a baguette like that before. <laughs> In Paris, they actually have a baguette um, rule. Let me wash my hands. They have a baguette law um, or an act, like an act of Congress almost. Sharon, you can help me out then because uh, moi aussi. <laughs> Okay. All right, shall we cut it? I got the butter Oh, you're out. gonna use utensils? Yeah, we can. Oh, civilized. So fancy here. So I'm just gonna cut. Well, you should cut it so they can see what the inside's gonna look like. All right, I'm not used to doing things for camera. So. There we Ooh. go, it looks perfectly done. Very bready. Thank you. This is a monumental moment in history in that Carrie, for like, I think probably the first time in his life is eating something sugar-free, gluten-free. I need sugar and gluten. <laughs> if this had sugar and gluten, it'd be perfect. <laughs> I right, see you. Here, hold on. Come here. Give me a big old fuzzy monster. Mm. Take it nice. Oh, he's drooling. Set. Okay. Good boy. Dogs like it? <laughs> no, it's good. It's, you know, I'm, first of all, I'm not a fan of pumpkin. I really am not. But I am a fan of hot, fresh bread mm -hmm. or cake. It's almost the... Uh, Consistency of a cake. Almost. Less so than a bread. A little bread. more dense. You wouldn't want a cake this dense. Mm, I disagree. <laughs> I think that um, almond flour, you know, it's, it, it absorbs a lot of moisture. Mm -mm, coconut flour absorbs. Oh, is it coconut flour? Mm -hmm. Coconut flour takes a lot of moisture. Mm -hmm. There's very um, little coconut flour in this. Okay, so then never mind. I was going to say it's something. It's just dry. <laughs> yep. You can put a little... Um, this is keto friendly. That was the whole point of this bake was to make something that reflected my way of eating. So this is uh, keto friendly. It only has. And what's um, this called? A, a pumpkin harvest bread. <laughs> we'll go with that. And we'll have a, a link to the, the website that lists all the ingredients, right? Or do we list the ingredients separately? 
Um, I think it would be better to link directly to the creator of the recipe. Agreed. I think they um, work very hard to provide the public for free these amazing keto recipes. And uh, if anybody is looking for delicious, sugar-free keto recipes, I highly recommend the nomnom.com. And it's very much nom nom. It's uh, g n o m dash g n o m dot com. Somebody wants to know why the back plate wasn't installed. Do you have any idea what they're talking about? The back plate. Mm -hmm. Nope. Me neither. <laughs> Apparently, they have imaginary parts that we don't have, or they're looking to find a problem where no problem exists, or I just don't understand them. Maybe they can be more specific, because I don't think that's a thing. The last job says I have to finish some work. Enjoyed the stream. Thanks, Linda and Carrie. Look forward to watching this over when Carrie uploads it to you. I don't upload it to YouTube. It's on YouTube now. YouTube has to process it, and when YouTube is done processing it, it'll be available uh, for everybody to watch after the fact. I have no control over that. Zero control. And I was wondering if this is okay for somebody that's watching their potassium. Hmm. Um, one, Downloading a piece of cake. <laughs> one of the um, kind of shortcomings of a keto diet is that you don't hold water. I like it. But as such, you end up um, letting go of a lot of your major electrolytes and, nu and nutrients, including magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So people who are, have potassium problems, like they don't get enough potassium, would have to do a lot more supplementing on a keto diet than on a normal diet if I can't imagine somebody having too much potassium. So if you're somebody that needs more potassium, you if you were on keto, you would just be eating a lot of avocados and um, his download of slices 92%. <laughs> you That's would funny. be eating a lot of avocados and doing a lot more supplementing even than on a normal diet. Oh, they're referring to the back plate on the... Uh, oh, this. No, no. No? I think they're referring to the liquid cooler we haven't installed yet. This? Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't gotten to that yet, have we? We have not. So it's not like we forgot. No, no, it's done. Oh, Let's just turn it on now, because clearly that's done. I mean, obviously, I overlooked having to... Mount, I mean, come on. This is one of the downsides of doing a live chat are these unnecessary distractions, and I permit it. I allow it. You're feeding it. Well, you might I, as well this, offer is them free bread. this is an interactive idea, right? I mean, unlike TV, where it's a one way communication, I want to communicate back and forth with my audience. And I think there's a little training the audience needs is to not be distractive and to assist if they want to help and be helpful. They don't necessarily need to. Um, it would be pretty easy to conclude I'm not done yet. I think that doesn't need to be said. Right. And so all they're doing is now that I'm talking about it, is it's instead of me doing this now, I'm talking about this. That as long as I'm live and I'm interactive, my choice is to ignore people or to acknowledge them. And if we want the communication to go efficiently and effectively and optimally, we should be helping each other out. That's all. And so part of that is me, and I decide what I'm going to read. I usually just read whatever is on the screen at the time. And um, maybe I need to not do that. I don't know. It's, it's a hard balance. It's, it's frustrating when somebody's jumping ahead and it's like, well, we're not there yet. I once got in trouble in fifth grade. They handed us a batteries, a box of batteries and a light bulb. And me and my friends started stringing the batteries together to make the light bulb burn brighter. And the teacher said, uh, you both sit in the corner because we haven't gotten that far yet. You've jumped ahead of the class. Wow. Yeah. And I think I understand the teacher now. <clears throat> <laughs> you get it. Gary McGraw says, McCraw, nice cake, Linda. Thank you. I'm on hemodialysis. I got to watch potassium and phosphorus. Well, keto definitely sort of makes it harder for you to keep in potassium. So if that's something that you're paying attention to, obviously talk to your doctor about it, but keto might be a good solution. And don't take advice from people on the internet. Please. Not even me, if you're smart. <laughs> Not even me. 
Uh, if you want to address your own computer show, if you want to address the uh, audience for a minute, I need to step out for a moment. I'm okay. going to go check the mail, and I'm going to mute. <clears throat> it's all you. I'll be right back. All right. All right, guys. Let's see, keto diet rocks. I like it. It's not for everybody. Um, it works well for me. Carrie, does your sister do gaming on PC? I do not do gaming on PC. I really just use my computer for work. Um, I have two gaming consoles that I rarely even turn on anymore. So when I do get in the mood to game, you know what, I'm gonna take that back. I do play, I'm gonna get probably roasted, I don't know. I really like to play StarCraft like um you know like the land party version of starcraft brood war like the old school um kind of like missile defense type version of starcraft so that is uh how i spend my time when i do play a pc game otherwise i do like you know xbox one and um my favorite game on xbox one is the gears of war series Can you sing us a song, please, Linda? There's not enough alcohol involved yet. You'll have to tune in to another drunk tech support for that to happen. Is that bread heavy having no yeast? Well, it's a, it's a sugar, or it's like a, a sweet bread. So, you know, consider like a banana bread, something like that, or a coffee cake. It's meant to be just a bit, a bit heavier. It's not, you know, light and fluffy, but most sweet breads aren't yeasted breads. So it's not different in that regard. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad you still like StarCraft as much as I do. Nice. David Crombie, hello, Linda. Do you have any other bake or cake or slash bread recipes? I'm an ex-baker and I love trying new things. I have a ton of recipes. Um, if I knew more about what you were interested in, if you're interested in like sugar-free and keto, the nomnom.com site is really great. And then also um, a good shout out go, should go to Keto Connect too. I absolutely adore that couple. And uh, they do a lot of great keto recipes and you can even pick up their cookbook at uh, Costco now. Is the bread heavy? It looks very, very heavy. It's not, it's not any heavier than a banana bread. How much tech stuff has Carrie taught you, Linda? Would you able, be able to build your own PC unaided? Um, Carrie has taught me a lot, um, but most of my experience and what I've learned comes from working in the industry, albeit very differently than what Carrie does. Um, my experience lies in point of sale systems so uh, I used to install point of sale systems for restaurants and support the networks. I do a lot of like, currently I do a lot of um, kind of server-based support and a lot of like um, working with IIS and stuff like that. It doesn't have a lot in common with the kind of tech stuff that Carrie does. Um, I do think I could build my PC by myself unaided but I certainly wouldn't do it to the level of detail as somebody like Carrie, who has been doing it for so long. Thank you, Tony. Let's see. Did everything spiral out of control while I was gone? No, we were talking about gaming. I was talking about my, my, um... Who's your son? My son is Merrick, your nephew. Actually, it's for the benefit of them. Oh. You're his... I'm his mom. Okay. So you guys are watching. If you see me build a computer with my nephew, that's her son. If you saw me build a computer with my niece, that's my brother's daughter. That's why right. I don't have to have any kids because you guys did that we, for me. We did that work for you. Thank well, you. I only had one though. I oh, learned. <laughs> I only needed 
I need to. You got it right the first time. <laughs> yeah, that's better. No, that's not nice to the other. No, no, no. We're joking. We have a very sick sense of humor in this family. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have a Coke. Yeah, German do. bread, Linda. You know, I've actually never made German bread before. I've had it. Does German bread normally have some sort of like coconut in it? So we were talking about um, Starcraft. This is going to get noisy for a second. I do have a love affair. I have a love affair with the old version of Starcraft. We have a European friends that's called an ice maker. You might want to look that up on Google. <laughs> they don't need ice. So you're more knowledgeable than Carrie. Absolutely about what? Not. About yeah. What? It depends on. Child depends birth. on the subject. If you want to talk about server operating system and integrating with IIS, yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't know nothing about but it. But when it comes to building a computer, not even close. Um, we all have our you areas of expertise. You too young to have kids, Linda. Robert, where can I donate to you? <laughs> <laughs> Linda, your son built my computer. That's amazing. I love to hear that. This is true. This is, yes, that that's right. That is so cool. Greg was... Uh, German bread only has nine ingredients. Why is that? Oh, nine. Nine. I get it. That's awesome. I have kids. One's named Jimmy and one's named Lyle. They're, They're nice. my fur babies. My doggos. My fluffas. My floofs. There goes or a nuka name. cola. Mmm. Now with extra nuka. Linda also has Portuguese roots. Well, we have the same mother. Right. Well, that's what we've been told. Mm. Who really knows? Well, the last name, mother's maiden name was Azevedo. Yeah. And it's very Portuguese. It's sort of like Smith. Now I gotta go change all my security questions. <laughs> Is it Acevedo or Azevedo? Don't answer Acevedo. that. Let them, let them figure it out. <laughs> then you don't have to change your skin. What, they have to try twice? <laughs> Avocado? I was wondering if you will do a call-in show again in the near future. Can you be drunk? Because you kind of have to be drunk. Based on some of the calls we yes. get. But I, the reason I do that is because some of the advice often that I hear on the internet, I could not possibly replicate how horrible it is without being inebriated. Even technical support in general is often given such poor advice. For me to give that poor advice, yeah. I would have to be intoxicated. Yep, I've definitely heard a lot of famous technicians. Um, one particular is in my head that like to give terrible advice. But I guess you get what you pay for, huh? People are telling me how Azevedo is sold, st spelled, but they don't know how our mother spelled because there is A-C-E and A-Z-E. Yeah. There's two spellings. Now, that maybe they're telling me that's the common spelling in Portugal. Right, or they could be stalkers and they could know. Oh. <laughs> I'm not hiding from anybody, so bring it. <laughs> well, my name is way different, so. That's true. Get that right, Joey. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and finish this install will you continue to entertain the troops. Okay. There's um, a back plate here. I almost stepped on a dog. They're accustomed to that. <laughs> I think these go to the middle. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've done one. No, maybe they just go to the inside. All the way to the inside. I think that's the... Harry, do you play video games? I'm, nobody's as good as me at Galaga. Do you play any console games? Yeah, when I'm not making videos and I'm not helping my customers on retainer and I'm not editing videos and I'm not dealing with talking to clients and solving support problems and handling repairs and upgrades and, and when I'm not um, spending any time with friends or family or my wife, then that's when I spend video games. In all of your free time. Yeah, right then and there. Um, 
Nick is suggesting perhaps you might do a drunk computer build. No. <laughs> okay, well, you pay for it, Nick. <laughs> you pay for it, and I'll do it. Somebody's got to pay for it. Is Nick going to oh, pay wait, for I'm it? sorry. That's Rich's suggestion. I think Nick just was clarifying. Well, Rich, is, Rich wants to do a build on December 2nd. He's welcome to bring his parts over, and we'll get plastered, Rich. <laughs> and your parts. You still want to do it? <laughs> do. Suddenly, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, it got, it got a little bit quiet in there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my parts? Wait, what? Oh, thank you, Elaine. Elaine says, Linda, you are by far the best guest Carrie has ever had on here. Wow. Yeah, I'll take it. Thank you. See, that guy at Walmart was totally wrong. I get a feeling the guy at Walmart hasn't been right about a lot of things. <laughs> what about their prices? Rich says, nope, it's too expensive if we screw up. <laughs> it's his idea. Make up his mind. What's it, what is it going to be? <clears throat> Okay, standoffs are in. Nick says when he comes to Arizona in March, we can do it. We can do what? I guess junk computer build. Do you like my Galaga machine? It's Tiny Galaga. Tiny Rick! It's Tiny Galaga. I think Andrew would like you to use the Arctic Silver he sent you instead of the stock thermal paste. Oh, that would make sense. That would explain why he sent it. Is that a smartwatch you're wearing? I am wearing Fitbit's smartwatch Let's see if I can it has uh, it's cool because I don't know if I can make it go to the camera there we go it has like changeable faces and it syncs up to my phone and I can use it to pay for things I love it Growing up, did Carrie have the cleanest room, and was he the booze in the house? I think you mean boss. Um, our house wasn't particularly clean, but I would say Carrie did have the cleanest room. When, when she was young, I was my brother pig. used to play a game. Remember, she's nine years younger than me. Yeah, my I'm brother is four years older than me, and he would say, and what does Carrie say? You know, so that was a game. Yeah. What does a dog say? Roof. And what does a cat say? I was Meow. probably, let's clarify this. This is probably like four this or five. This was like, yeah, four or five years ago. And <laughs> she's a little kid. And she'd say, what does Carrie say? And I would answer, get out of my room. Because that's all Carrie would say to me. Get out of my room. Carrie was, it's my room. Get out. You don't belong in there. When Carrie was 13, 14, I was what, four, five? Mm -hmm. So I was just a nuisance to and you, him. And you took my Star Wars figures and had them play. I made them play Barbies. Mm, it still angers me. <laughs> it's such blasphemy. So I would say, yes, Carrie had the cleanest room in the house. It was not clean. He actually wasn't the boss of the house. He very much just kept to himself. He was happy in his room with his computer, and uh, he liked it that way, or so we all thought. Thank you for the compliment, Eric. Did Carrie have a mustache at 13? No, no. I can't grow a mustache can't, now. Yeah, no. Don't mess with the man's Star Wars figures. Well, 
you say that, but I'm telling you right now, Luke Skywalker was a patient and gentle boyfriend to Barbie. No, 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 no. Luke Skywalker stepped up like the man that he is. My sister did that with my WWF figures. It's just wrong. And if the clock has all the functions, do you see the time on it? Yes, my watch is also a watch, too. What? <laughs> Does Carrie love bacon? What if I told you there's a Ziploc full of bacon on his counter right now? Mmm, bacon. If you play Barbie in Star Wars, you get space balls. Well, that explains why that's my favorite movie, so... Elon Musk refers to space balls constantly. I love space balls. He says, they said, what's beyond ludicrous speed? He goes, well, it's got to be platinum, right? I thought ludicrous speed was the top speed. No, it was platinum. In space balls, they went platinum. Because when they go into hyperspace, it all turns into platinum. He goes, ludicrous speed now. Yeah, and then ludicrous he goes, ludicrous speed was the and top one. And then it was one. platinum. No, they've and gone that's to why the he plaid. Did the, that's plaid. Isn't that what I said? He said platinum. I'm sorry, plaid. Sorry. But plaid. no, ludicrous speed was the top speed. And then it's plaid after that. No. And Well, according to Elon, it is. Okay. Well, and I don't like space balls. I would win a debate with Elon Musk over space balls. And he also likes the flamethrower idea because Mel Brooks plays yogurt. And he's explaining all the merchandising. And he says, and there's the flamethrower. The kids love that one. <laughs> Space balls, the flamethrower. OK, I'm just cleaning the stock thermal compound off of the uh, bottom of the uh, water pump. It's Harry, just... it was plaid, not platinum. My bad. It was close, though, right? First three well, letters said... are right. When they, when they hit the speed, it left like a trail, a reflection, and it was sort of a plaid reflection. And so... Um, uh, As a Star Wars fan, I Lone don't Star, find really to Lone be Star really... looks up and he goes, Space Ball One, they've gone to plaid. Okay, whatever. Carrie and Linda, do you play Rocket League? I do not play Rocket League, but I've made a Rocket League cake. <laughs> May the shorts be with you. Was there a Princess Leia action figure playing with Barbie? I don't know if Carrie had Leia. Of course I did. I wasn't interested in Leia. I was only interested in the in Luke girl. Skywalker. <laughs> Every time, I see, every time I hear Stevie Nicks talks, I hear Carrie Fisher. Is that wrong? I don't understand. You know who Stevie Nicks is? Yeah, I know, but why would you hear Carrie Fisher? Because she got the same voice. Oh. Three viewers you lost earlier while well, you gained 35 new ones. Congratulations. That's Carrie. usually the way it works. Huh. It's pretty typical. People are fickle. Yeah. The cream rises to the top. My true supportive viewers remain. Although some people had to go for work and other reasons. Like Linda, they got bored. Are you T H I C C. Thick? Spelled wrong? I don't know. Do I look like I'm 12? I don't know. I think it got deleted. I, I don't, don't know what I don't that speak 12 year old. I don't either. <laughs> I thought thick meant dumb, but I guess if you're spelling it wrong, you're probably not one to call someone else dumb. 
somebody wrote a comment. They said, I know more than this guy, and they spelled no N-O. Yeah. And I was like, yep, it's like sure do. like when you claim to be a genius and you spell genius wrong. <laughs> nope. I used to do that. I was that guy. Wild E. Coyote. Genius. Did They're making a Space Jam on... 2 movie. It's going to have LeBron James in it. Huh. Yeah. And they're, doing re they're redoing Pet Cemetery. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, and Aladdin. Will Smith is playing Aladdin. Live action. I just wish we could have new ideas. Why didn't we keep remaking the old ones? Because we can't get any new ideas. We're done. Everything that we've ever been, everything that can be thought of has been thought of. I don't think that's true. That's what the patent office said in 1930 something. Mm. Everything that has been invented has been invented, and that's the end of it. I think they were wrong. Did you get Carrie in trouble by telling a lie about him to your parents like my sister did? About what? Did I ever get you in trouble by lying to our parents about you? Hmm. I don't think so. I don't... We weren't kind... We weren't the kind of kids that got in trouble, so... <laughs> because nostalgia brings a lot of money, like member berries. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Movies wise. I want you all to be sad. Do you want us to be sad? Mm -hmm. I think also, again, Carrie, Carrie and I, even though we grew up in the same house, um, it's, it's so different because he was, you know, so much older than me. That I it, still am. <laughs> that it it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like a you know I'm gonna hit you and you're gonna hit me back or uh, I'm gonna tell a lie to get Carrie in trouble. It just that wasn't how it was. <laughs> Linda, do you have a pet? I do not have any pets. I had a dog that I loved more than anything in this world, and she lived to be at an age where I had to make a decision to put her down. And it was the hardest decision that I ever had to make in my whole life. And I hated that I had to make the decision. I didn't feel like it was, should be up to me to decide. And I... It was just a yes or a no question. Well, there's a reason. And so I put her down. It, and if, if you're on the hospital, that's a real easy decision. <laughs> put her down and realized that if I were to own another dog, I would have to make that decision again at some point, and that's not something that I want to do. So I all things come to an am end. Dogless, and um, because I don't, I I just didn't want to have to make that decision again. And now I'm in a relationship with a man who has severe pet allergies, dog allergies and cat allergies. So um, it's just sort of now to the point where even if I wanted a dog, um, I wouldn't have one. Linda, I'm the youngest in my family. My sister would boss me around. My siblings didn't boss me around either. Carrie was kept to himself. that episode of Family Guy where um, 
Roadrunner and Coyote, and, and uh, Coyote finally catches and kills the Roadrunner. That was part of a cartoon cavalcade. It was a special DVD. It wasn't a Family Guy saw episode. It. It was a Family Guy. It was in Family Guy last weekend. Last weekend? Yeah. No. Are you sure? Oh, I, I didn't I see the most it. recent. The one that just aired yes, uh, maybe I didn't yesterday. Maybe it on. Maybe it was something else. It was Seth MacFarlane's cartoon Cavalcade. Oh. Many years ago. Wow. <laughs> Can't remember plat or platinum, but this that is I why know. I don't come out of my rock very often, huh? Out of your rock or from under your rock? Exactly. Okay. Did Carrie have any girlfriends in high school? Nope. Hmm, no. That's a big that's no. A, that's a hard no. <laughs> Who's going to win Astros? I don't know what that means. I don't have that kind of paper. LeBron or Jordan carry I don't know. I, I have zero preference. Do you have preference over LeBron or Jordan? Well... Jordan was my generation, so I'm going to be, you know, sort of leaning in that direction. One of the greatest basketball players of all time at a time with Scottie Pittman and Charles Barkley and, and um, you know, Phoenix Suns did really well at that time with Danny Ainge and um, um, Dan Marley and all those guys. KJ? Um, but when you had Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan, I mean, today you got... I mean, Muggsy Bogues. I mean, who could ask for more than you know, a little short guy playing with all these big, big, tall guys? I mean, he was good. It was like a little Michael J. Fox running around there. <laughs> and um, Played for the Charlotte Hornets, right? Muggsy Bogues? Yeah. Uh, he played with, uh, I thought he was with Miami, if I'm not mistaken. But I, I was really into the Phoenix Suns when they were really, you know, in that time in that history uh, where they were doing really well and basketball was all everybody talked about, Charles Barkley, just a lot of, you know, I am not a role model, a lot of that kind of stuff going mm -hmm. on and and um, just kind of lost interest. I was into wrestling when Hulk Hogan and WrestleMania and all that sort of happened and Andre the Giant and Rowdy Roddy Piper and all those guys and then I just kind of lost interest in it. Okay, how does this go on? Well, there's a bunch of fan connectors back here. I probably need to probably need Somebody to postpone that. Asked if I lived far from you. Yes. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a bit of a drive. Oh, you think you're better than me? Cause you don't have as many neighborhood shootings in a sketchy Walmart? Yeah. It's different. Can Linda bring more women to the channel? Why can't I bring more women to the channel? Yeah. <laughs> Any Steve F Perry fans in this chat? Like the guy that sang the Oh Sherry song? Wasn't that Steve Perry? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Is he Steve still? Steve Perry sang Oh Sherry. Linda, ask Carrie about the kilt. It's uh, sitting, I moved it. Um, <clears throat> gentleman from Scotland sent me a kilt. He'd like me to wear it. Two packer M&M, Carrie and Linda. What's with these oars? Why well, can't you just have them? M&M is from Detroit and I'm from Detroit. That's so a real easy answer. I wasn't into the notorious B.I.G. or Tupac and the East and West Coast stuff. That never really wasn't into rap at all. I, I don't like rap I'm a, I'm a white boy from Detroit, so it's all about rock and roll. And that doesn't make me a Kid Rock fan, okay? It makes me a Thank fan of... That. There's a lot of people from... the Famous people from Detroit. Tom Selleck, Madonna. Um, 
all of the Motown music. Uh, Ian wants you to put on the kilt. You knew that was coming. I will, I will be doing that, just not today. I don't know when. But yes, it, it you know, the, the Scottish kilt is, uh, if, if anybody other than a Scotsman sent it to me, I, w I would just laugh it off. But this is an important and proud Scots history. And I'm honored to wear the kilt. I really am. I'm afraid it's a size 36 and I'm like a size 31. Yeah, I think the camera must add several pounds. And the, the I'm not quite sure um, what we're going to do about that yet. Tom Jones or Tom Petty? Tom, Tom Petty. Petty. I like prog rock. I guess progressive like rock. Progressive rock. I'm not really sure Sting, what... Sting, police, that okay. would be progressive. Yeah, it's hard to not like that music. CBGB, anything CBGB? Blondie? Yeah, it's hard to not like it. I just didn't know that's what was considered progressive rock. I like indie music. Progressive rock could rock. also be Pink Floyd. Yeah. I would yeah. call that like chill rock. Yeah, uh, that's contrary terms. What part of Detroit are you from, Carrie? Oak Park. But I was born in Mount Sinai Hospital in Detroit proper. I didn't know we were born in different hospitals. You were born in Southfield. You're I was not born in Royal Oak or uh, Beaumont Hospital. I think that's Southfield, isn't it? I thought Beaumont Hospital was in Royal Oak. I'm sure somebody will Google it and tell you in a moment. Yep. I'm pretty sure it's Southfield. Linda, what does most of your dinners consist consist of since being keto? Um, just eat a lot of dust. <laughs> I eat a lot of um, fatty meats. I eat a lot of like um, um, ribeyes, um, sausages, bacon, um, chicken thighs are amazing. I love chicken thighs. So um, like. I do, um, I use a lot of the Keto Connect recipes as well. Like they have a chicken thigh cashew chicken that I love to make. Um, I eat a lot of chicken wings. I like chicken. So. I like chicken wings. Um, I we eat should a go lot get of, chicken wings. I eat a, yeah. I eat a lot of meat and vegetables. I probably eat the same thing that you do, but if it comes with a potato or french fries, I'm replacing that with a salad. That's it. Otherwise, it's the same for the most part. Um, Earth, wind, and fire. About, oh, last night you I remember? had beef stew for dinner <laughs> that I made. Anybody know dust from Little Britain? That's what I was referring to. Somebody um, got it. Yeah. What can we eat that's fat free and calorie free? Dust. dust. Now get on the scale, you fatty. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. Loved I it. I eat a lot of meat. I eat a lot of meat too. Starch is no good. Yeah, I don't eat a lot of starch. Lots of steak, lots of chicken, lots of veggies. I do get, um, I make these keto treats. Um, and I do make, um, like a keto ice cream. So I like to eat something sweet after my dinner. And I also only eat one meal a day anymore. That's what I do. Yep. It's just because I'm not hungry. Nothing breaded in the traditional sense, but I will bread using like, uh, pork rinds. I will bread a Ooh, piece an of chicken idea. in pork rinds and then deep fry it. And pork rinds mixed with a little bit of almond flour and Parmesan cheese makes an amazing breading. On chicken you can make some fried chicken that will knock your socks off I don't know my socks are on pretty tight chicken wings are overpriced for the amount of meat you get on them I go to Costco it's a lot of work and I buy um, I don't even know how much it is but it's like enough to feed me for like two months and it's ten dollars at Costco so I do pizza fan here. I do a lot of pizzas, and I do a lot. I do it a lot of different ways. Um, I I love pizza as well, and I don't. I have not given it up. I just don't eat 
the traditional pizza crust. I make pizza crust out of almond flour and cheese, or I'll use like a cauliflower crust. She will, I do like an English breakfast, although I avoid the beans. Well, that's a meal in itself, though. You know what? For two days. It, it's not as much as you think it is. Oh. You see photos of it, and it is a lot of different foods, but it's like normal. It's like not American-sized portions. So, yeah, you're getting the eggs and the toast and the sausage and the beans and the... But it's small portions. Give it the beans! So, it's different. Have either of you been to the uh, Motown Museum? Nope. How about chicken pizza? There is a recipe out there for chicken crust pizza, and I bought all the stuff to make it, but I haven't made it yet. Were the village people from Detroit? No, they were from San Francisco. They were, they were from San Francisco. Carrie makes Arizona sound like such a terrible place to live. It Why is. do people live there? Everything the about this state is horrible. Is telling you it doesn't want you to live here. Yeah, it's oppressive. Yet we continue to live here. Because we're stupid. So, there you have it. Maybe if I back up there. A couple of people are saying your mic is out or that you're hard to I hear. had it muted um, when I was sneezing. Oh. I didn't think people wanted that in their ear. English portions are much smaller than American portions. Yes, yep. anybody's portions are, are much smaller. smaller than American portions. Yep. Also, no free refills on soda in England or France. Or ice. <laughs> or ice. Or ranch dressing. And they want to charge I you for really... ketchup and mustard at the McDonald's. Oh, well, they had mayo on every table, but um, I really missed ranch dressing Well, that's dressing not ketchup or mustard, away. is it? Linda, do you have a cooking YouTube channel? I do not. Um, maybe someday, but I'm just gonna be here focusing on working with Carrie for a while. Yeah, and it might spin off into something. Yeah. Whether it's cooking or some other interest. Yep. Except Australian portions. You call that a portion? This is a portion. I'm sensing a Family Guy reference. <laughs> it actually is. Every time somebody compares something to something else, Paul Hogan gets a check. <laughs> Italy is plenty of ice. I want to go to Italy. We have to pay the sugar tax. Michael, are you in New York? What's up, Michael Bloomberg? Do you consider yourself as vegan? No, I'm the opposite of vegan. Almost carnivore. I'm just hooking up the front panel switches and connectors. You guys have seen me do this 8 million times. I might be exaggerating by a few million. When is the floor show? I don't know what that is. <laughs> we serve chicken parma with fries the best and salad on the side. Do you eat French poutine and Canadian Coke? Oh. I've never tried French poutine before. It's disgusting. Isn't it just French fries with like gravy? And gravy on it? and yeah. I would probably really enjoy That's, that. I don't want anything touching my French fries. Sacrilegious. Winston, thank you for your donation. What did Winston donate? Two Canadian dollars, I think. Nice. Thank you, Winston. I enjoyed the last of my Coke, Winston. He sent me some Coke from Canada. Yeah, he just said, do you like French poutine and Canadian Coke? I sent Carrie some Canadian Coke. I drank it all. I did it all on camera. I, I saved it for the camera. They are rude and mean here. Yep. I'm sure it cost him way too much money to ship that to me, though. <laughs> English portions keep you fitter longer. Yeah, but well, it rots your teeth. Well, plus all the walking that you can do in England. It's a very, depending on where you're at, of course, but like I found Manchester and London to be really walkable places. You, you don't really need a car, and that also helps keep you fitter. Is that a word? It is now. To me, what's on the plate is a portion. It depends on the size of the plate. 
No, in the planner. United Kingdom from Newcastle. Oh, they didn't know they had a sugar tax there. Is that just in Newcastle or is that throughout the entire United Kingdom? Because I was just there and I didn't, I guess maybe I didn't eat any sugar. I did buy some um, biscuits and I don't remember seeing a tax, but I was still trying to work out the money. Lyle's board. Rochester NY87 donated $20. Thank nice. you for your very generous donation. He's donated before. So he's donated again. I appreciate that support. Thank you so much. In the UK, the government have introduced a sugar tax on sweet drinks, supposedly to discourage us from drinking sugary drinks. Hmm. When did that start? All of UK. Linda, if you want to lose weight, don't let the food on your plate touch each other. Okay, well, I'm not trying to lose weight. Thanks. <clears throat> looking for? Another Diet Dr. Pepper. Tiny can. I think I'm about ready to fire this bad boy just up recently. and see what's gonna happen. Oh, I gotta hook up one so more power cable. I've been there since April. I guess I just didn't notice it. I was there in June. Love London. That London. That London. You're going to that London. I feel like um, there are very, seemed to me that there weren't very many British people in London. <laughs> I met more Americans in London. <laughs> maybe they were all at work. You know, maybe they have jobs. Thank you for your donation. I don't know if I'm gonna say the name right. Is it Magni Johansson? Mag maybe Johansson? Magni Johansson? I don't know. Are those He's also a frequent contributor. 55, are those the NOK, are those? Norwegian Krona. Krona, okay. Krona's, very nice, that's a very a generous. Krona's about 25 cents. A nice donation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All donations are nice. Yes. I can't remember, somebody is, I think is Swedish is Krona and Norwegian is Kroner. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not quite sure. You Wouldn't you love to live in Norway? Absolutely. Very, very expensive place. Iceland also use, I think they use something that's a K too, Kroner, maybe. I wasn't there very long. Reykjavik. Reykjavik. That's all I know. Oh. That is my entire Sounds Wikipedia page. Sounds better in English page. than in Norwegian. Can you tell us phonetically how to say it? What next? Robert. To carry, what next? Carry a computer that bakes. Why a not? computer that bakes keto food and poops out Bitcoin. That would be awesome. <laughs> London is an amazing place to visit, but a horrible place to live. I get that. What is? London. I get oh, that yeah. it would be a horrible yeah, place yeah, to yeah, live, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is amazing to visit. And I've, I've been there twice um, and I'd be more than happy to go back. Well, she loves the butter, the Irish butter. What is this, Kerrygold? Yeah, Kerrygold butter. It's so much cheaper to get that in England than it is to get it here. I think there's some shipping costs. If you costs go to Birmingham, there. UK, the second biggest city in UK, I've been told it's Manchester and that's where I went. Manchester. Go Manchester. Another donation for the pile from Thomas Carter. Five pounds, thank you. Oh, nice. Cheers. Icelandic Krona. 
I was born in Keflavik, Iceland. Very nice. That's what we were saying. I want a computer that does the washing up. I live in London. A lot of people live in London here. Hmm. I got an Airbnb flat in London last year and spent about 12 days there in my flat in Fulham. And it was an amazing experience. Um, unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately for us, uh, we had just missed that terror attack that happened to be where we were playing. Was it the guy in the van? Yeah. Yeah. So we just missed it by a couple of days and we're fortunate to have not been included in that, but it is terrible that it happened because um, London is such a wonderful, wonderful town. Whoa, get those hips up there, boy. Oh, crone means crown. I'm gonna steal the keyboard and mouse from you momentarily. Oh. Oh no, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not. Looking anyway. You gotta it click it once. It I goes to it. sleep to save battery. Linda thought of going to Wales. I have. Actually, was thinking of it. Um, was thinking of it the last time I was there because I was in Manchester and I had a car. Manchester. And I had these grand plans to um, to drive through the whole of England and then into Scotland. And I thought, even though Wales wasn't on the way, I was trying to work a way to get there. And after three days of having the car and seeing what it's like to drive in England, we promptly returned the car to the rental place and just took the bus. <laughs> I need to interrupt here for a moment. We're gonna do our first power on self test and we're gonna use your monitor at your home right there that you're using to watch us. Uh, we can still put the camera up here in the corner. All right, here we go. You ready? First power on. You've seen everything live. There's obviously no camera trickery happening. And if it doesn't smoke or catch fire... We call that a win. Here we go. You know why it's not turning on? Because of the switch on the power supply? Would you mind? Sure. Thank you. All right, let's try that again. Oh, oh. we've got a fan hitting, cable hitting the fan. Ooh, look at that RAM light up. This is why cable management is important. I'm not getting any video though. We'll give it a minute. It could take up to uh, 90 seconds for video to appear. Look at how colorful that RAM is. Uh, I did not hook up. What did I not hook up? Fans aren't running. Cooler's running. Oh, oh there we got goes. action. Why are my fans not turning? What did I miss? Oh, I have to plug them in. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that ram is pretty. It's like a party in there. There's a party There's in my a ram. Party in that computer, and I want to be there. Let's see if I can hook these fans up really quickly. Quick lock. One, two, three. I think while Why you do that, one? I'm going to cover this bread so it doesn't uh, dry out. Okay. So that Michelle has some. Hmm, that fan is just a little, that fan cable in the rear is just a little too short. We'll figure that one out later. So I got all the fans turning there up front. Cooler's running. This is a weird bias, isn't it? Step around here and see what we got going on. Basic or advanced. I want to I'm an advanced kind of guy. Why is my keyboard not functioning? Okay, well those are too hard to get to. So I don't know. Exit? Will it exit? I don't know how to use this. Nothing is happening. It's 
alternating between two settings. Yes sir, I can't read it, it's too small. All right, I gotta make this full screen because I can't see. I cannot see, it's too small. Restore defaults. Oh, I can see it now. Do I want to restore defaults? No, I do not. It all looks good. All right, I'm not going to even mess with anything in here. Let's save changes and exit. And then let me go get a uh, Windows 10 installation. Now this is still Windows 1809 that was released. There's really, really, potentially, if you're creating, there was nothing wrong with a clean install of it. And um, I uh, made a new flash drive with 1809, erasing 1803. I don't even have 1803. Well, I have it on a server, but I don't. Uh, I don't really think it's necessary to use 1803. Now it should just automatically boot to the USB drive because <clears throat> it's got nothing else to boot from. You'll see it turned on a lot faster now that it's turned on before. Always give yourself patience and time on your first boot, like I said, up to 90 seconds. And I'm really not going to alter anything into the BIOS because I want to show you that you generally don't have to. And we're just going to go ahead and click next here and install now. And we're probably going to get the license agreement momentarily. I'm going to skip the product key for now. We'll do that later. We want, I think it's Windows 10 Pro, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check the box I've got here. This is Windows 10 Pro. Yep, that's correct. That's what we're going to, we're going to install that. And then we'll hit next. And then agree to the license agreement and hit next. And we're going to do always do custom. And you'll see that the M.2 drive appears. I did not hook up power or data to the uh, two and a half inch SSD intentionally so that there's no confusion when installing the OS. There's one drive, one drive to install. Fewer decisions to be made, less likely to make a mistake. I see the uh, light here on top is flashing that I guess they've combined the power light and hard drive LED right around the top of the power cable up here. Uh, not the power cable, power button, I mean to say. There does appear to be a reset button, but it doesn't... Oh, it's not a reset button. It, it controls lights. There's no reset button on this case. That There was no reset uh, wires to hook up on the front port umbilicals. Hey, did you mute your microphone? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Yes. Okay. What country is this computer going to? All computers ship within the United States. There was one I built that's going to Australia. We're going to see if that uh, successfully arrives affordably and in one piece to determine if I'll do that ever again. This microphone, is, I'm sorry, this microphone, this computer is going to Pennsylvania. Yeah, look at that RAM. Here, let's go to uh, let's go to a different video feed. Oh, look, we're already on our first boot. That's a fast Windows 10 install. Look at that. Wow. Right. So yeah, look at this. Look at the way the RAM looks. It's a party. Definitely a showpiece. The NZXT logo's all lit up down here. Let's go back and see how we're doing on the install. 
Getting ready. Oh, we're rebooting again? Yeah. Oh, sad. Paul Allen passed away. Who's that? From Microsoft? Oh, Paul Allen. Yeah. Oh, wow. He was just in the news that his uh, cancer came back. Yeah. Well, he had a good life. I wish I had a tenth of the life he had, a thousandth of the life he had. Yeah, but if you only live to be 65. Yeah, there's plenty of people that didn't live to be 65 that didn't have as good a life as he did. That's true. Still sad. Yeah, he, re he retired from Microsoft over his illness back in the 80s. Oh, wow. He lived with it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. You'll be building the Aussie one for their 240 voltage. Power supply handles all that automatically. You don't have to do anything special. He simply has to buy a power cable to go from the wall to the back of the power supply, which is the same as any other computer in, the, uh, in Australia. And when he plugs it in, the power supply will auto detect the 240 volt. So he doesn't need any adapters or anything like that. What is the repair book? Uh, maybe he's, uh, Winston it says I bought the repair book. Maybe he's referring to my book. Why is this taking so long? strange what is it doing it's because you told that it was too fast is that what happened yeah oh see just a moment it's like keep your pants on does your sister miss michigan like you do carrie i don't remember michigan i was, she was three too young when we moved away Version twenty two. Nuka Cola. All right, that is basically a successful build. And um, what remains to be done, I'll be looking for a BIOS update a little bit later, uh, some cable management. I'll download the Samsung Magician software. I'll hook up the other Samsung drive. There's some uh, tweaks and little configuration changes that the uh, owner of the computers asked me to do that he's detailed out. And I'll take care of those for him. Um, they're all just little minor things that are completely optional and not required, not something I some of it, like disabling, um, uh, having anything plugged into USB turned off with power management, disable that sort of stuff. And it's um, all pretty normal stuff. Nothing, nothing like crazy. We're not disabling any services or anything like that. Repair book by Mark. Matt's Rickardson says, thank you for the nice evening and good night to you both. Uh, nice job. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate thank that. Thank you. Hello, Carrie. I'm from Northern Ireland and I love your videos. Thank you, James Quigley.
Oh, the repair book by Scott Mueller. Yeah, excellent. It's more like a Bible. You know, it's those four inch thick upgrading and repairing PC oh, books. Oh, nice. That, you know, I originally learned from. Nice. Uh, great, great books, great resource. Much better than using the internet because you know everything in the book is true and accurate. <laughs> Unless you find one in the dumpster. Right. See, sometimes there's good stuff there's in the dumpster. There's good stuff in the dumpster. Just keep that. Carrie, would you live in Long Island? Uh, no, I, I don't like people. I want to live in a cabin. It's too people there. Yeah, it's too, it's too people I, I want to live somewhere secluded with the less I have to deal with other human beings, the he better. He wants his own, um, what's the guy who wrote the manifesto? The Unabomber? Yeah, he wants his own Unabomber cabin. No, that was like a little outhouse. I need something nicer with Wi-Fi. <laughs> Listen how quiet. Can you hear this computer at all? Not over your other appliances, really. You know, there's. F Why are my fans not? I thought I corrected that. Why are my fans not on? Did I not put the connector on correctly? I swear to. Maybe the motherboard turns them off because it's not hot enough, or maybe I'm missing a pin. Are you both off for some chicken wings? I think. Sounds good. ATL. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Yeah, I think the fans are off because it's just not hot enough. Carrie, what's your opinion of the 9900K? Um, I'll let you know when it's released. And I have one. Yeah. I can't have an opinion on something I haven't seen. Come on, Carrie. Living in the valley is not that bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of something positive other than the fact that we're both here and living in the same place. <laughs> At least Let me know what you come up with. Living in a... But I... Oh. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's a horrible, horrible place to live. What does your wife think about the idea of living in the middle of nowhere? She loves it. <laughs> you know, there's really something human. We're getting back to nature. About self-reliance. You can always get in a car and drive into town for anything you need. It's not a big deal. Maybe a 20 or 30 or 45 minute drive versus, you know, here in Arizona, everything's literally two blocks away. If I want to go to a grocery store, I can choose between about eight grocery stores within a very reasonable distance of where I live. Where I live in Michigan, I would probably have to drive, oh, maybe five minutes to a grocery store and it won't be anywhere near as big and it won't have the selection and it won't have such good prices. But people will know you by name. You know, yeah, that sucks because you know it'll be the you'll have to like get dressed and do your hair before you go to the store because you know you're gonna see somebody you know. <laughs> I do like the anonymity. No, that's of not, not knowing the people I shop at. That's not true at all. Hmm. People are very relaxed when you live up north. Up north is usually um, people are just real. They're not interested in putting on makeup and impressing other people. They're much more honest people. Oh, not me. I'm gonna fool everybody with my makeup. If that makes me less honest, then so be it. Yeah, maybe more of an age thing. You know, as you get older, you start to care less. Mm -hmm. Generally. That's generally the way it works. Always exceptions. But generally, uh, how much you care what other people think tends to go away with age. When you start to realize a lot of the people you're worried about what they think you wouldn't like when you spoke to them anyway, it becomes less important to impress people you don't like. Mm -hmm. I would like to have a second home, like in Flagstaff. I like living in Flagstaff, Ugh. being in Flagstaff. It's horrible. I don't... Think Everything's that. horrible. Yeah. It's all bad and awful. And get off my lawn. Uh, I'm keeping this ball. Yeah. That is our Windows install completed. And I think... Let me go ahead and just power this off. Let's see how long it takes to shut down. I'm going to hit the power button. Oh, it didn't take that long at all. Well, it's still on. Now it's now off. Now it's off. Wow. Yes. Nice. 
So yeah, I'm gonna look. I'm going to look for a BIOS update, and um, I'll do some cable management here, and I'll show you the computer again uh, before, when I get ready to button it up. You guys can see the completed project before I wrap it up. And, and uh, is the owner of the computer still in the chat? Andrew. What do you think of Sedona? Sedona's okay. It's I prefer touristy. Flagstaff. Sedona's a great place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Yeah. There's not much to, to do. No. There's not much it's, to eat. The I restaurants like, are very slim. and. Well, what I like best about Sedona is its convenient location to Cottonwood where all the wineries are. This person says, I hate living in small towns where everyone talks and there's no privacy. Yeah. Uh, it depends I on the small, small town. town. Like, it was like where, that in Havasu. Yeah, but where I would live, uh, I'd be living in a cabin in the woods. Yeah, you get to drive so, 30 minutes just to go get your, you know, whatever you need for the grocery store. It wasn't 30 store. minutes away. It, it, there was a family fair grocery store right at the end of the road. It was, you made, you went to the end of the road and you made a left and it was maybe a half a mile. And a family fair is maybe one quarter the size of a Safeway or Albertsons. And that, and if they don't have it, you you're not ain't getting, getting it. it. And well, you're probably not getting Amazon Prime two-day delivery sure there. Sure you are. Of course you are. Two-day delivery? Maybe not two-day, but... Yeah, it ain't going to be two-day. Whatever you want. Certainly you can say goodbye to one hour. Well, it's not important or to me. two hour. What, what, I think when, you're, when you live in a slower pace lifestyle, two-day delivery just doesn't become important anymore. Andrew says he's still here. Um... I was going to ask Andrew something. Oh, do you want me to put these back in, or do you want me to just put them in the motherboard box? These are your two and a half inch drive adapters that, you know, you can you can go here or here. Or do you want me to move the two and a half inch drive up to the front, maybe up, you know, right here? I think it's better in the back. I mean, if it was mine, that's the way I would do it, out of sight, out of mind. But it's your computer, and now is the time. If there's any changes you'd like me to make, Andrew, I'm happy to do so. So you don't mind shoveling all that snow. Where would I shovel snow? Where am I going? Where <laughs> am I going to go? Good to just be, yeah, I guess there's nowhere, nothing to do. Huh? I'm, I'm YouTubing from the house. Well, when you move to Michigan, I'm moving to England. <laughs> Did Catherine provide me a link for a BIOS update? Oh, Catherine, you're the best. You're the best. How come I don't see it? Oh, downloads. Cam software, Optane memory. Okay, these are all the drivers. BIOS version 1.01. 1. Wow, not a I'm lot of I'm probably pretty now. sure I got 1.01, 1. when you think? Yeah. That was released on March 28th, 2018. This is one of the problems I tend to not like about small motherboard manufacturers like EVGA and NZXT is they don't seem to stay on top of their BIOS updates. There seems to be a sweet spot between getting updates on a regular basis and then doing too many. Yeah, like NVIDIA released right. a driver last week, the week before, and the week before. Uh, Andrew's saying the motherboard box is fine. Good answer, Andrew. That's less work for me. Lake Havasu City is a cool city. Nope. No. Hard disagree with you there, Brian. If you like scorpions, rattlesnakes, and... It's windows. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe it's not so bad. Grass is always greener on the That's other side true. of the fence. I think ideally That's I would fair. keep the house here and then have yeah. a house in Michigan and if the winters were really bad. But really, I don't need to go anywhere. It's no worse going out in 115 degree weather versus, at least yeah. when it's cold, you can put more clothes on. You know? Yeah, you can only take and off heat, so much you can start a fire. the police tell you to knock it off. It's on. not as expensive as an air conditioner. Right. And if an air conditioner breaks, you're at the mercy of the repairman and what it's going to cost to fix and when they can fix it. Good luck sleeping. Right. But at least if it's cold, you can pile under blankets, you can put on more clothes, you can start a fire in the fireplace. It's less, it's less costly. Why would I need to shovel snow? Where am I going to go? I'm self-employed. As long as my internet works, I can continue to broadcast on YouTube. I can continue to, you know, if I got to ship a computer and I got to go to the post office, I can wait for the snow to clear up a little bit, you know, when it's not such a snowy day. It usually isn't like a week straight of buried in snow. It'll Right. Start to go down, and as cars drive, it starts to minimize down. And, um, you know, if you avoid, I don't like delivering computers when it rains here. We had a big rainstorm the other day, and the streets were all flooded, and it was very sketchy to drive a car in. 
Terry McGill says, hi, Carrie and Linda. Excellent computer build and time to go for a job interview soon. Well, good luck with your job interview, Terry. Yep, good luck. Platter Jockey says, I'm over 50 and I love the snow and cold. Yeah, I, you know, the air is cleaner. The people are nicer. I think it's both mentally and physically healthier than yeah. living in Arizona. If you have a pool, Nick. No, you can't jump in the pool because the pool is like 95 yeah, the degrees. Pool is like bath water. Oh, it's horrible, horrible. But the ocean is cold. So yeah, if you live next to an ocean, but usually where the ocean is, it doesn't hit 110 degrees. Right. Just to begin with. There are a lot of hotheads hot in yes, Arizona. Yeah. There are. Mm -hmm. That's true. They actually did a college study that people live in really hot climates tend to be uh, less tolerant and, and just angrier. Angrier people. Yeah, I've seen it firsthand. Finland is the best place to live. I wouldn't doubt that. I would love to go to Helsinki. They do a, a demo uh, convention called Assembly that's been going on for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Man, I would love to go to Assembly. That would be an amazing experience. There's so much of Europe that I Cold want weather to see. equals warm people. I think that's true. We all suffer together. <laughs> When the power goes out That's and you don't have any internet because for, of the Nick. snow, you're not going to be doing any shows. 4G. Well, when the power goes out because of the rainstorm and when the power goes out because yeah. of the electric storm, Sometimes when the power goes out so because of the, because the idiots driving the roads hit the, hit the power poles, regardless of the weather, it's a beautiful, clear, perfect day, and your power goes out because some moron well, was texting and driving. We, get, we have power, we have brownouts mm -hmm. because it gets so hot here. They have to stop producing electricity for residential areas and concentrate it for businesses and hospitals. And we power goes I, out look, anyway. it, Nick can live wherever Nick wants to live. Yeah. Please don't move where I'm moving because I don't want to be around people like that. What, positive people? No, people that want to argue with me and challenge me. Oh, I thought me. he was just trying to be positive. Being positive about, about telling me I have terrible ideas? Well, he's, no, I think he's just tell, giving you um, a brighter side to see. There's, the brighter side is for me. the silver lining of your cloud. No, the silver lining is me moving and getting the heck out. That's the silver lining. It's a goal. You know, in life, you, you need to decide where you want to go. And once you make up your mind, then your next decision is how you put in the processes to get there. That's yeah. all. I'm not living like an animal and I end up where I end up. I, I plan where I'm going to go. And then I figure out what I need to do to get there. Yep. And if you're where you want to be, good for you. I'm not. Nothing you're going to say is going to change that. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Good try though, Nick. Yeah, right? It's just weird. Where does where you want to live have anything to do with where I want to live? Linda is a peacemaker. Part peacemaker, part shit stirrer. <laughs> oh, am I allowed to cuss? I'd rather you didn't. Okay, sorry. I want parents to feel comfortable with their children watching this educational channel. I will uh, not do that again. No, yeah, just for future reference. It's not button. the end of the world. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. That's scary. Four tornadoes identified in our area last week. Yeah, well, we'll get those in Michigan. Go down in the basement. Standard procedure. Just another Your day in the D. In England. Yeah, there's something to be said about the people. Uh, I find the people of Michigan are, are more like me. And I like to be... Less. I'm hmm? going to blame Phoenix. Nick, did you just get trolled by Carrie? One of your wrenches said that. Hmm? Maybe you can fly to Australia with computer and luggage. Isn't it, does WOW fly to Australia? What? Does WOW Airlines fly to Australia? I've never even heard of WOW Airlines. I flew WOW to Reykjavik and to England. Was that your sole plane? 
Yeah, and it was $99 uh, one way. Linda, have you been to Scottsdale? <laughs> I was just talking about going to Reykjavik. <laughs> Scottsdale is to this point eluded me. No, I've been to Scottsdale. Carrie, would that case take your nemesis, the Kraken X-72? The nemesis was the 62, not the 72. I think this was a 52, wasn't it? What's the box say? No, this is the X 62. 42, this is a 62. 52. I thought the 62 no, was no, bigger than that. Yet. This case ate that with no problem at all. I think it would take the 72. I don't think I've ever had a crack in 72. $99 was it, was it powered by rubber bands? It wasn't powered by rubber bands, but I swear to you, I saw chickens in the aisle. Did they come and collect gas money down the aisle? <laughs> there were some chickens and goats. <laughs> All right, guys, we need to wrap this up because we have a bunch of things. we got to get cleaned up and we need to go eat. We've been live here this whole time. And we really appreciate everybody who's tuned in to watch us and who's contributed to the channel. My thanks, of course, to my moderators who have done Thank such a great guys. job. Yeah, keeping out the trolls and keeping it civil in the chat. I really appreciate that. And, of course, everybody who's watching, all the videos participating in the chat room. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry for the delay in getting the video out. Um, but I will say that uh, looking to do more videos more often as I try and steer more of uh, YouTube as a job instead of as a hobby. And we'll see if that becomes doable or not. Lots of projects are in the works, lots and lots from the Computer with Mitch, the Kids at Hope charity that I talked about that's in the works. I have to finish editing, well, sooner or later, the Build with Dad. That's a year ago now, one mm. year ago, and that edit hasn't been finished. And um, just lots and lots of things, just so many things are going on. Uh, but all thanks to you, you know, your viewership and your contributions and your support are what fuel me and drive me and, and, and motivate me. And uh, for that, I thank you very much. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Until then. Thanks for having me. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.